In this video, we're going to create a website for your nonprofit. This website is going to include your homepage, about, contact, services. It's going to have an online donation platform that takes credit card payments over the internet. It's going to have a latest news page, and it's going to have a calendar. It's going to be a fully complete website for all your nonprofit needs. Sounds good, right? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Hey folks, this is Steve with Nonprofit Ally, and on this channel, we like to help nonprofits grow their online presence, build their capacity, and fulfill their missions. And there's nothing that does this better than having a really good website. And that's what we're going to do today. We are going to build a nonprofit website. This website is going to include a donation page that actually takes online donations straight through a payment gateway, an event calendar, and a latest news page. Now, as we go through this video, I have timestamps below in the description. So if you need to step away and come back, that will help you get back to where you left off. Also below is a link to where we're going to be getting the domain and the hosting, which is going to allow us to install and create our website. Now, before we go too far, let's answer the one question that's most likely forefront in your mind. That's how much is this going to cost? So I'm going to give you the short and simple answer to this. Your cost to build this website with all things included, your domain and your hosting and the WordPress application is going to be less than $3 per month. If you follow the steps that we take and the links that we provide, you're going to get hosting and a free domain for less than $3 a month. And we're going to be using WordPress, which is a free website builder. So bottom line, the cost of this website is going to be about 3 bucks per month. Now, before we get started, I want to give you a quick lesson on the difference between domain, hosting, and websites. Okay, so let's just cover hosting. Hosting is basically a company that provides you space on their server for your website. Your website gets installed on their server, so they're the host, right? Now, think of your website kind of like a house. If it's a house, it needs land to get built on. Well, it's a website, it needs a server to get built on. So that's basically how that works. And then for your domain, well, your domain is just the address. In this case, it's more like a P.O. box because you actually can move your website from one server to another and keep the same address. So it's more like a, a P.O. box. So think of it that way. Your domain is the mailing address. Your website is the house. And the server or the host is the land that it gets built on. It's that simple. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing we need to do is get our hosting and our domain. We're going to start by signing up for hosting and we're going to sign up with HostGator. There's a link down in the description below. So go ahead and click on that and we can get started. So just a quick disclaimer, that link below is an affiliate link. So I will get a little bit of a cut, but it doesn't change your price in any way. I use HostGator personally, and that's why I actually recommend them in all my videos because they give a great product and Best of all, they have great service. You can actually call them in real time and talk to a person on the phone and not have to wait through a ticket system that may take days to get your answer. So I highly recommend them. I use them myself and that's why they're here in the video. So go ahead and click that link below and let's get started. All right, you should be at a page that looks similar to this. Now on this page, you're gonna see you have a few different choices to pick from. They have three basic hosting plans. They have the hatchling, the baby, and the business. For our needs, we're only going to be doing one website, so we really only need the basic hatchling plan. If you plan on having multiple websites on the server, you can certainly pick the baby plan, or you could go to the business plan. I don't think that's necessary for most websites. The hatchling plan is going to suffice for almost all websites that we're going to be building here. So go ahead and select Buy Now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to register our new domain. As you can see here, there's a place to enter that domain. So go ahead and enter the domain that you want here. And HostGator will do a quick search and let you know if that domain is available. Now, if you already own your domain, then you want to select this tab over here and then just enter your domain here. For this example, I'm going to register a new domain. So I'm going to go back to this tab and get started there. Now, I'm just simply going to type in the domain name that I want. And for you, I would do the same. Just type in your the domain you want, probably likely the name of your nonprofit. So for me, I'm going to put the nonprofit website, plain and simple, the nonprofit website. Um, and over here, you get to pick your extension. For a nonprofit, you always pick 
.org. I'm going to recommend and say that, and I'm actually going to pick .com because this is just an example site for me. But for nonprofits, you should be a .org. And so go ahead and click that extension there. At which point HostGator is going to go through the records of all registered domains and let you know if your domain is available. Mine is, and you can see it pre-checked it, that it is available, and I'm going to get it free for one year. Now, if you see that yours isn't available, then go up here and just try to find another variation of your name until you find the domain name that you like, and then go ahead and select that. They do give you options here to select different extensions like .club, .net, .com, .space. You don't have to worry about those. Just go ahead and get your .org, uh, unless you really want to own the .com version of it. It's not necessary though. So let's go ahead and scroll on down. Just below the domain registration, you're going to see domain privacy protection. Domain privacy is optional. If you do check this, then it will prevent your name from being shown as the register of your domain, which means people won't be able to look up your contact information in a database. If you don't check this, it's not a big deal. You're Information will be public, but you will probably end up getting some spam emails and phone calls. So the choice is yours. It won't affect your website in any way, but it may affect your inbox. I'm just going to leave this unchecked for now and move on. Now let's scroll on down to the next part where we're going to choose our plan. Again, it's pre-selected the plan that we um, had chosen, which is the basic Hatchling plan. You can see that they have their other plans down here available as well. We're going to keep with Hatchling. And I definitely recommend getting the 36 month. It's going to be the one that saves you the most money and it's most likely that your website is going to be around for three years. So make sure that you do um, select the right plan that you want. Now let's scroll down just a little bit to create your account. This is pretty straightforward. You're going to just put in your email address and um, a password and a security pin. That pin is kind of your access to support and things, uh, other features that you may be needing. So, you know, a, a simple four digit pin number is used uh, quite often to access some support features. So go ahead and fill this in. Now we're going to scroll further down to our billing information. And as you can see, my auto fill actually filled in everything for me already. So, but basically follow through here at step four, enter your billing information, your name. You don't necessarily have to have a company name, but if you have a nonprofit, put your nonprofit name in there. Keep in mind that you are also going to be adding your credit card information. So it's probably best to use the same billing information as the credit card that you'll be using. So there's no confusion or interruption with your payment. This can always be updated later, but for this stage, use what's at hand. And then of course, on this side, you're going to fill in your credit card information. I'm not going to fill this in right away just because I'm going to be lazy. I don't want to have to edit out and blur all of it. Um, but go ahead and fill in your credit card information here. I'm skipping this just because I don't want to have to like double edit and blur and do all that kind of stuff. Now let's scroll on down to the bottom. Section number five is adding additional services. Now you can read through these, select the ones that you want. For us, we are actually just going to skip every single one of these. We don't need these add-ons at this time. And if you do change your mind, you can always add them later. Okay, so let's scroll on down to the next section. And down here at six and seven is a review. They've already filled in our three-year code for us and a review of what we're going to be getting um, for our new account. Now just click that you agree and click check out. So that's it. You now have your hosting and your domain. It'll take a moment for your account to get set up, and then we're going to move right into installing WordPress. Once your account is set up, you're going to be sent to a welcome page, or, or you may actually be sent directly to your account dashboard. In any case, what we're looking for is the link to install WordPress. Here on the landing page, this is where it's located, and if you didn't get sent to a landing page, you might have been sent to the dashboard. Looks something like this. So if this is what you see or, or something similar to this, what you're going to do is simply look for the link to install WordPress. Once you find that link, go ahead and click it. Great, you should be redirected to a page that looks like this. This is where we're going to install WordPress. It's a fairly straightforward process. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's scroll down. Software setup. 
Our installation URL is going to be an HTTPS, not any of the other ones here. Typically, you don't want www in front of your domains anymore, just yourdomain.com, no www. And also, we want to have the HTTPS. S stands for secure, secure socket, and that is what we're going to be using. Um, so make sure that's selected and make sure your domain is selected there. At this point, you can put the site name of your website, which is basically going to be your nonprofit name. And my website is the nonprofit website. And then the site description. So maybe you have a tagline, um, um, serving people in need, um, feeding the homeless in Seattle, or whatever your kind of tagline might be. If you have one, that's where you can put it here. Now remember, don't worry if you don't have one or if you're not sure what to put there, you can always change this later and we'll go over that in the settings when we go over the actual settings for WordPress. Um, right now I'm just going to put an um, example of a nonprofit website in here. We are not going to enable multi-site and we are not going to disable the Chrome job. Um, so if your admin username I'd recommend just changing it to your name hyphen admin or maybe your name hyphen your zip code. It doesn't have to be too clever, but uh, not too obvious either. Now for the password, yes, you do want to keep this complicated. You want to make sure you have a very good secure password. In fact, I don't even like this one. I am going to go in here and I'm going to add just a couple random upper cap whatevers, right, to really make a good password. And for the admin email, just put your email in there. Any notifications or updates that need to get done to the website will be sent to that email. Now let's scroll down a little bit again. Choosing a language, choose the language of your choice. Select plugins. We don't want to add any plugins right now. Um, so don't worry about adding any of these in there right now. Advanced options. This is going to be like for renaming your database and things like that. These are all really good, so you don't have to worry about your advanced options. You also get the option here to select your theme. We're actually going to be installing the theme ourselves, so we're not going to worry about this either. At which point you can scroll on down to the bottom and you can just click install. All right, WordPress should be installing. This should only take about 30 seconds, maybe a minute, two minutes tops. And once it's ready, it'll send you to a screen that looks like this. There's a couple things we're going to want to do here. Um, right now, your website is live at this URL hill, and the administrative URL, this one here, is where you log in to go into the back end of the website. I'm going to open up both of these in different tabs just to show you what they look like. So I'm just going to right click and open in a new tab, right click and open in a new tab. But while we're here, you may want to just highlight this URL here, the administrative URL copy that and put it with your password. At this point, when you go to visit your website, you might see a privacy error, something that looks like this. And that's because the SSL certificate hasn't been installed yet. And that's what makes it an HTTPS version HTTP. Um, so if you get this notification, don't worry about it just yet. Um, go ahead and click advanced and you can proceed to the website. It's safe. It's your website. You've installed it. Um, it's a safe place to go. We know why that certificate is not installed. So whether or not you had that um, security warning about seeing your own website, um, you should eventually see this, which is basically the template to your nonprofit website. And back into where we installed this, if you, um, if you did click on this access here, this should take you to your dashboard. So that should take you to a page that looks like this right here. This is the back end of WordPress. We're going to go into full details here in just a moment. So between the two tabs, you should be able to click between your front end of your website and the back end of your website. So now we have gotten our hosting with HostGator. We've bought our domain, which we did while getting the hosting through HostGator, and we've installed WordPress. Congratulations, folks. We're now going to move on to going into that WordPress dashboard, and we're going to just get some settings set up, and then we're going to move on to the installation of some of the plugins we're going to be using for the calendar and the donation platform and things like that. 
and then we'll move on to design. So folks, phase one is done. Step one is done. Let's move on to the next phase. Now that WordPress is installed, we're going to go into the back end of the site and we're going to change some of the settings. These are some global settings that need to get set because they affect the entire site. So follow along. OK, so here I am back in my WordPress dashboard. So right away, and this is something that people miss a lot, we're going to go into the settings area of this. And to do that, we just go down here into settings over here on this your um, navigation. I'm going to click on settings and we're going to go to general. And we're going to go through all of these, but we're going to start at the very top. So here you can see your site title. Your tagline has already been, it should have been in there. Your website address and all of that is in there. You don't have to worry about any of that. Anyone can subscribe. You want to leave that unchecked. But the important step here is going to be setting your time zone. So this sets the time zone for your website. So when you publish something on your website, it's in your time zone and not zero UTC. This, I guess, is Greenwich time. So go ahead and click on that and find the time zone that uh, relates to where your location is. Then pick your date format that you would prefer to use, your time format that you would prefer to use, when the week starts, uh, your endurance caching level, you can just leave that at normal for right now. We might turn that off later, but that's okay. And then you don't have to worry about skipping WordPress 404 handling for static files. Just save your changes. So next, we're going to go on down to discussion. Now, the discussion area is about comments. So people can leave comments on posts. And you may not want people to leave comments on your latest news post. In which case, you're, you're going to want to turn most of these off or at least moderate them. So go ahead and read through these. I am going to set this up so that it's set up to allow no comments. If you don't want to have comments on your page, just follow along with what I'm doing here. If you do want to have comments, then read through these each and um, specifically pick what you want. Um, so we're going to uh, leave the attempt to notify blog links and the allow link notifications. That's fine, but we are not going to allow people to submit comments. So we're going to uncheck that. We're going to do the automatic close comments on post. We're going to check this and we're going to close the comments one day afterwards, just in case somehow a comment field gets open. We are going to have, um, oh, I'm sorry, I missed this. Users must be registered and logged in to comment. We do want to check that as well. Moving on down, we want to be emailed whenever anyone posts a comment. Again, just in case some spammer figures out how to get in there. And we want to hold all comments for moderation. So before a comment appears, we want a comment must be manually approved. Go ahead and check that. Um, we're going to have a hold queue just in case. Just in case someone slips through, we're going to turn this down to one or more. So if it contains one or more links, we'll put that moderation in a queue on hold. Um, and then we're going to scroll on down here to where it says avatars. Do we want to display avatars? Well, we're not going to even be displaying comments. So we're going to go ahead and turn this off and check that. And you'll see that whole section will disappear. Now go ahead and save that. So now we're done with the discussion section here in the settings. Next, we're going to head over to permalinks. Now, by default, WordPress is going to set your permalinks up to day and name, or it might even be plain right? This makes the URLs to your pages longer, harder to remember, and also really bad for search engine optimization. So we're just going to change this to post name. So go ahead and just click post name. This will simplify the URL and make it more search engine friendly. Now, if you go down here, you're going to see options for category base and tag base. We are not going to worry about those. Um, the, the defaults are perfect for that. So go ahead and save changes. And that's pretty much all we're going to do here in this settings area. All right, so the setup process is done. We are now moving into the installation phase. And let's keep on moving. All right, so we have the foundation of our website built. We have installed WordPress. Now we're going to add the functionality to the site by installing plugins. So if you're already in WordPress, you're already back end, go ahead and go to there. What I'm showing you here is actually the login page. So 
This is just an example. If you ever step away from your computer, shut it down, come back later, next day, or whatever, this is where you access your website. You're going to go to yourdomainname.org, or whatever your website name is, forward slash wp-login, or wp-admin. Both of those will work. So I'm just going to click login so I can get into the back end. So now at this point, I'm inside my WordPress installation. This is the back end of the website. If at any time you want to see the front end, what it looks like to people visiting your site, you can simply go up here to the name of your site, scroll over, and you'll see a drop down there called Web Visit Website. And what I like to do is right click and open this in a new tab so that when I'm working in the back end and updating stuff, I don't have to leave the page to see it. All I also have to do is go to the new tab and view the work that I've done. All right, now back to the back end. Right now we're at the home page for WordPress. We're in the dashboard. And what we're going to be doing now is we're going to add the functionality, the plugins. And so on the left hand side, we want to go down to the plugin link here and just click on that. Or if you want to, you can click on installed plugins. They both take you to the same place. Now once here, you're going to see most likely some busyness, right? And this is kind of stuff that gets in the way, little messages. We're going to ignore those and just scroll down to the page and you can see that HostGator, and this happens quite a bit with WordPress, has installed plugins already for us. Some of the most common plugins that are used. What we're going to do is we're going to completely remove every single one of these because we're not going to use them all. We're not going to use any of these and they just clutter up the website. All right, so the first step to our clean and lean process here is going to be to select all these plugins and simply just go to the top here where it says plugin and just click on that and you'll see that every single one of these plugins gets checked. And then under bulk actions, we're going to, well, first you have to deactivate your plugins. You can't delete one until it's deactivated. So make sure they're all deactivated. We're going to do that and apply. And now you can see that all the plugins now kind of have a white background to them, which means they are deactivated. Now that they're all deactivated, now we can delete them all. And we again, click on the plugin link and that will highlight, that will checkbox all of those. And again, bulk action. And at this point, we are going to delete them all. So now we're going to add the plugins that we're using. So we want to go to add new here. And this connects to the WordPress plugin directory. So this is all the plugins. There's thousands of plugins here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install Elementor. So go to the search box on the top right here and type in Elementor. Elementor is a page builder and it makes making and designing a website a lot easier. So we're going to go ahead and Elementor website builder. It's going to look like this and go ahead and click install. Once it's installed, you can go ahead and activate the plugin. Once it's activated, it's going to send you to a landing page here where it's going to ask you to create an account. I do recommend doing this because we are actually going to be using some of the pre-built templates that they have. And in order to do that, you're going to have to be connected to your account. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this myself. I already have an account with them. So you can see here, I load up my screen and connect my account. So go ahead and create yourself an account. Once you've created your account and connected it to the site, just go ahead up here to the top right and click this X. This just sent us back to the WordPress dashboard. So again, we want to go back to plugins or install plugins, and we want to add some more plugins. So go to add new. We're going to go and find our donation platform, which is give WP. Just type in give WP all one word, and you'll see here is give WP. I'm going to go ahead and click on that install now. And once that's installed, go ahead and activate that plugin. We're going to dismiss the setup wizard. We're going to do this later. And again, it keeps um, redirecting us to different pages. We want to go again back to plugins and continue the installation of plugins. We're going to, we're going to add new. So the next thing we're going to install is our event calendar. You can just type in event calendar. And the event calendar we're going to be installing right here is actually just called the events calendar and hit install now. We are not going to activate this at this point. We're going to move on and we're going to add our, our cache, which is going to make our website faster. So we're going to type in fastest 
cache, hit enter. And there it is with the Jaguar or Cheetah in there. Install now. And that is installed. And again, not activating it because it's going to make us leave, us leave the page when we activate it. And we're going to install some backup software called Updraft Plus. And there is Updraft Plus right there. We are going to go ahead and install this. Again, do not activate. Just a couple more things to add here. We're going to look up something called Starter Templates. And these are going to be used in conjunction with the theme that we're going to install, which is what we're going to install next. So Starter Templates right here, made by Brainstorm. Install that. Again, do not activate it. Now let's go back to our plugins and have a look and see, see what we have installed. Now the ones up here that are kind of have a blue background, that's because those are activated. As you recall, we activated these at first um, and these haven't been activated yet. So right now we can go ahead and activate these. To activate them, just simply click the ones that are not activated yet. Go down to bulk actions and select activate and apply. So our plugins are now installed and activated. The next thing we're going to install is the theme. And to do that, we're going to go over on the left hand side here. And you're going to look for appearance. Appearance is right here. And you're going to go to themes, click on themes. And this shows us all of the active themes. These actually came installed on the site as part of the site. Is we're going to get rid of these here and just keep this one. Even though we're not going to be using this one, we're going to keep this one. So let's quickly get rid of these themes. Click on theme details down here in the bottom right, delete. And yes, we do want to delete that. Again, theme details, bottom right, delete. Confirm you do want to delete that. And the last one, theme details and delete. So now we only have one theme. Now we are going to add a new theme. So we're going to simply go up here to add new. Click on that. And the theme we're going to use is the Astra theme. Astra is very popular. It's been around for a while and it's not going to go anywhere in the near future. It's always a concern with themes. Sometimes they get built and the developer doesn't like it anymore or, or moves or whatever. And then the theme is no longer updated, which means your site is no longer being updated. We're going to pick Astra. And, and in my case, Astra shows up right here right away. Um, if you don't see it, just go into the themes and type in Astra and it'll of course show up again. But this is Astra here. And all you want to do is simply click install it. And once it's installed, go ahead and activate it. So now that we installed and activated a new theme, our site is going to look different. So to get a preview of what the site looks like right now, just go up here to the left hand side, view site. You can open that in a new tab. Or if your site is already opening a new tab, just go there and refresh it. And you'll see this. And I realize this looks worse than probably what it looked like before, but trust me, it's going to look really good here in a minute. So in order to make this rather plain looking theme look better, we're going to install a template. Okay, back to the back end. On the left hand side, under appearance, you're going to see something called starter templates. This is one of the plugins that we installed. Um, and this is a starter template for the Astra theme. So go ahead and click on that. So right here, this first introductory thing, you don't need to watch that video. Just go ahead and click build your website now. And then we're going to be picking the page builder, which we're using, which if you remember, it was Elementor. That's what we installed earlier. So go ahead and click that. And then here you're going to be presented with all the themes. These are their pre-built websites that come with this plugin. So Astra has um, probably about 100 pre-built themes, as you can see as I scroll down. Now, don't get worried about the color scheme of these templates or even the images. These images are stock images. Obviously, you're not going to use an image of a picture of someone else on your website from, for the most part, because um, all this can be and will be change. But what we're looking for is just basically the layout. So look at the layout, um, how the headers look, how the menu looks, where the logo is, right? That's all going to be preset. So I'm going to scroll on back up to the top. And right here in the beginning where it says search for starter templates, we're going to type in charity. 
once you hit enter, the search is going to reveal about 10, maybe 12 different templates that um, are related to charities. And we're actually just going to pick this first one here called Charity. Kind of has that violet, magenta looking, whatever color that is. Um, go ahead and click on that. So this is our template. And you can scroll up and down and have a quick look at it. On the left hand side here, we're not going to customize much over here because we're going to do that later on. That way we can learn where the settings are on the template. So we're just going to skip and continue down here. Now here you can pick a color theme. If you have a color, a color scheme that you like, here, go ahead and pick it if it matches your own. You can see when I click on one, I just clicked on this blue one. It changes the blue fonts here and kind of the scroll over is the way the buttons work. If I scroll down, you can see it changed the background on this one. Um, you know, if I pick a different color scheme, it changes it that light blue. You know, if I change this, it'll change it to green. Now again, we have total control of this and we will um, be able to customize this to our exact colors once we get this installed. So if you want to just skip ahead, you can. If not, if you find one that you like, feel free to use that. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it on this kind of light, lighter blue. And then down here, you can also change the fonts. Now I like this kind of high, <coughs> high, um, bold, impacty font. So I'm going to leave it there. But you can also try to pick other ones here just simply by clicking on these. We're going to customize these later. So let's go ahead and continue. And here in the last step, I do want to keep all of these checked. We want the customized settings. We want this to look just how it looks for this part. Um, the only thing I'm going to uncheck here is sharing non-sensitive data. I don't believe they need to know about how my site's used. Um, so I'm going to uncheck that. And now I'm going to hit, hit submit and build my website. So this could take anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes, depending on your internet speed, but usually it doesn't take that long. So just wait for it to install. And once it's done, you'll be redirected. Great, so now that template is installed on your website. Now we just want to go back to the back end of WordPress. And to do that, we go up here to the top corner to this icon here. We're going to exit the dashboard. And now that we have a new template installed, let's just go ahead to the front end of the website, refresh the page, and see how it looks. Now you got a website. Now you got a good starting base for your website. Just scroll on down, see how it looks. Make sure everything imported OK. Before we move on, there is one important thing we should do before we go any further, and that is back up our website. We certainly don't want to lose all the work that we've done thus far if something were to go wrong. So this is a good safety measure, and I'm going to take you into the settings for this so that we can make sure that we get regular backups safely stored so that if something were to go wrong, we, do, we won't lose all the work that we've done so far. OK, so here we are at the back end of WordPress. OK, so if you remember, we installed Updraft Plus as our backup plugin. And you can find that here under Settings. Over here at the very bottom, you can see Updraft Plus Backups. Go ahead and click on that. This will take you to the main dashboard. I'm going to run you through some of the settings here so that our backups can happen on a regular basis. So we're going to start here at settings. So in this area, we can set up how the backups are taken. Right now, the backups are set to go manually, which means you'll go into the website and you'll you know, click backup now. And it's going to retain two copies of the backup. So once you do a third or a fourth or a fifth copy, the oldest versions, the oldest copies will get deleted and it will only keep the two most recent versions. Same with the database. You have a database as well that comes installed with WordPress. That's also going to be manually done, and it's going to retain two copies. Now, you can change this to be set to hourly, weekly, monthly, however you want. So if you update your website on a regular basis, you may want to pick daily. But if you rarely update your website, you may want to pick monthly. For this demo, I'm just going to set it up to retain two backups on a weekly basis. I'm going to set the database to the same weekly and two backups. Though during this development stage, you may want to set your backups to daily and retain as many as five to 10 backups. Now down here, you can set up your backup to be stored offline or not really offline, but in the cloud, right? Some remote storage area. 
If you don't select something like this, then your backup is going to be stored on the same server as your website. So if something happens to your server and you lose your website, you're also going to lose your backups. So here you can use cloud storage like Google Drive, OneDrive, or Dropbox. The easiest to use is Google Drive, and that's the one we're going to use. So click on Google Drive, scroll down, sign in with your Google account, and connect it so that you back up to your Google Drive there. I'm not going to do this right now, but if this is what you're going to, how you're going to connect yours, I recommend doing that now. Below this, you can see what's being included in the backups and make sure here everything is checked because we do want to have a good full backup. If you want to get an email copy of the backup, you can get, check this to make sure that you get emails every time a backup is made. And then you can save your settings. Once it's saved, just click on the Backup Restore tab up here at the top. Now just click this button here to start your first backup. It's going to ask you um, what you want to include, and in this case we are going to include everything, everything. And then this bottom one, only allow this backup to be deleted manually. We're not going to worry about that, we are just going to back up now. So this may take anywhere from 30 seconds to 5 minutes. You can sit and watch and wait for it to go ahead and complete. Or you can move on and start doing other things on your website. Eventually, though, you'll see a message that your backup has been completed, and then you'll be able to move on. All right, let's go create those pages that we're going to need for this website so we can start designing these pages and adding the content. All right, the final step in our setup phase is going to be the addition of all the pages that we need and then adding them to the menu. You're going to go on the left hand side and you're going to go over to pages. Here you're going to see all the pages that are already installed on your website. Some of these were installed when we installed our theme. Some of them were installed when we just installed WordPress and others were installed when we installed certain plugins. So a lot of the work is already done for us. So a few of these we don't really need like the sample page. This one we can just go ahead and trash. So go ahead and scroll over it and you're going to see you have edit, quick edit, click on trash. And that will get rid of the sample page. Sample page has now been moved to the trash. And so this is important to know how WordPress works. When you throw something out, it doesn't really go off the site yet. It goes into the trash bin, which is here. You can go ahead and click on that. And inside here, you'll see there's that sample page. At some point, eventually, or even now, you can delete this permanently. I'm going to go ahead and click delete. All right, let's go back to the All tab here. So our website's going to have most of these pages, but we do need to add our latest news page. So to do that, simply go up to Add New up here at the top, or here on the left-hand side, you can also click Add New. Both of these will take you to the same place. Once there, you'll be in the Gutenberg Editor of WordPress. You can go ahead and scroll through these if you want to get a quick introduction on how this works. But for our purposes, I'm just going to click off of here and I'm going to put in our page title. And for this one, this is going to be our latest news page. You might call this announcements or articles or whatever you want, right? But this is where we're going to be putting, this is our blog, right? So once we have latest news in here, we'll simply go up here to the top right and click publish. Of course, WordPress makes us click twice to publish for some reason, but we will go ahead and click twice. So now we've created our latest news page. Now to get out of here, go back, click on this W here in the top corner. This will take you back to all pages. Okay, so now you're going to see here, we do have a latest news page added. Next, I'm going to show you how to rename a page. The one page that was added with the theme is called What We Do. And what we do, in for our sake, is going to be our services page. But let's say you didn't want it called what we do and you wanted it just called services. And so you don't have to add a new page to do that. You can simply just change the existing page. Now there's two ways to do that. I'm going to show you both. Um, and this way you'll have a better understanding of how these pages work. So we're going to scroll over what we do. You can see you have a few different options down here and we are simply going to select edit. This will take us to that blank white page, the Gutenberg editor. And in here, we'll simply change the title of the page by selecting all, by clicking and dragging on it, and type in services. This will change the name of the page. 
but it doesn't change the URL, or what's called the permalink of the page. The permalink, which is over here in the right-hand side, just click on the arrow, is still called what we do. So this will show up in your website like this. In my case, the nonprofitwebsite.com slash what we do. You typically want these to match. And to do that, you just change the URL's slug, the permalink. Change that to services. Best practices for this is to use all lower cases, and if you have multiple words, to use hyphens. Never use spaces in the permalink. So all lower cases and hyphens instead of spaces is how you properly do a, a, a slug or a permalink. Once that is done, you can simply select update, and our what we do page is now called services, and it's located, in my case, the nonprofitwebsite.com slash services. Now let's go back over here to this little WordPress icon to go back to the view pages and see all of them. And you'll see here now that it's been changed to services. Now I told you I was going to show you two ways to do this. The second way is actually quicker and easier and something you may be going back and forth to throughout the time that you have your website. So it's a good, good trick to know. We're going to scroll over services and we're simply going to click quick edit. Let me scroll up a little bit. In quick edit, we'll show you the title and the slug, the permalink. The title is services and the slug is also services. So if we wanted to have this be our mission page or our mission, or maybe we want to change it back to what we do, you could simply do that here and then click update. And that would update the page's name and its slug, its permalink. I'm not going to do that now, but I just want you to know that that is here and it's very easy to access. A couple things left to do here. If you're not planning to have a privacy policy, and in this case, um, for our sake, we're not going to have a privacy policy. We're simply just going to trash this and move it to the, to the garbage can. So there's one more page left to install, and that is our donation page. So the ones that are installed are the confirmation or your donation failed or the donor dashboard, which we're probably not even going to use. We'll leave it installed for now, but we do need a place for our actually our actual donation form. And so we're going to create that now as well. So simply go up here and add new. In the title, just type in donate. You can see that the slug on the right hand side has mirrored that. And now we can just publish. Now let's go back to the WordPress pages page. And you can see here are all the pages we are going to be using for this site. So you may be wondering, why didn't we install a calendar page? Well, the plugin we're using for the calendar actually installs one automatically. It's not seen here, it's just a default page. Let me show you where that is real quick, and then we'll go about adding it to our menu. You're going to see over here on the left-hand side, you have something called events. And if you go down here to settings, you're going to see the settings page. And here it's telling you where your calendar is. This is confusing, and I understand, um, but it's trying to make things easier easy for you. Um, so I'm going to just right click on this and open this in a new tab. When you do that and pick the and you click on the new tab you entered, there is our calendar. Obviously we don't have any events on the calendar right now, so it shows up empty, but this is where the calendar is. So now that we have all these pages installed, it's time for us to put them into the menu. Because if you go back to your main home page of your website up here on the front page, you're going to see that what we've added hasn't been added to the menu yet. So we're going to configure that and go on to start branding this top menu bar with our own logo um, and, the, and the pages we're going to be using for the site. Okay, now that we have all of our pages set up and ready to go, we're going to go ahead and create a menu to house all of these pages so that people can easily navigate our website. To do that, let's head into our WordPress dashboard once we're in here, we're going to go down to Appearance, and under Appearance, you're going to go to Menu. This will take you to the Menus dashboard, and here you should only have one main menu. So let me scroll up a little bit here. So this part over here, this is your menu. This is your main menu. And over here on the left-hand side are all the pages and links and posts and events that you can pick from over here on this side. So you can see here, our menu has a home, about, services, and contact. 
If we go to our main website and have a look on the front end, you can see Home, About, Services, and Contact. Now there is a donation button here. This is actually part of the header or the header builder, which we're going to go into um, right after this. So don't worry about the donation page. We're going to link that in a different way because it's a button and buttons go on to, at least with this header, bit, header builder, buttons get added to the header um, in a different way than just doing it through the menu area. Let's go back over to the main menu. Now to find those pages, simply you can go to most recent, or if you want to, you can view all. You can see all the pages here. Or you can just search. Like right now we know we want to add latest news. So we just type in latest and there's latest news. Let's go ahead and click on that. Once that's collected, you just click add to menu. And then you'll see over here on this side, latest news shows up there. Let's go back to our most recent tab. Donate, I told you we're going to add in a second because that's going to be a button. So right now, the only one we're missing is the events or our calendar. Now, if you remember, the calendar creates its own link. This is how you can go and get it. What we're going to do is we're going to go over to events. I'm going to do this in a different tab so I don't lose this page, but I'm going to go to events, settings. I'm going to right click. I'm going to open it in a new tab. That pop opens the settings and it says, where's my calendar? And it says, your calendar is right here. So this is a link. I'm going to right click on that link. I'm going to copy the link address. And now I know where the calendar is. So let's go back to our menus tab in the menus. And in this case, we're not going to add a page because we don't, we don't have an existing page for this. We're going to add what's called a custom link. And so go ahead and open that up. The URL for that link is the address you just copied. So go ahead and just paste that in there. The link text, um, you can type events, calendar, whatever you want, right? So whatever you're going to call it. In this case, I'm just going to call it, mm, I'll call it calendar and then simply just add to menu. So now we have our latest news and our calendar added. Now here's a tip for you. When you create your menu, you want to put your most visited pages or the pages you want people to visit most. So usually it's the same. Farthest to the left on the menu bar. The ones that are farthest left are the most important ones. And typically the ones farthest right, that's your about, your contact and things like that. And then, of course, if you have a call to action, a button, a call to action, that's usually farthest right, and it's usually a button. So it's like this big donate now, or contact us, or call us now. That's your call to action button on the menu. That's our donate button, which we're going to do later. So we're going to arrange this menu. Right now, our most important thing we want people to know about is our services. So I'm going to take these services, and I'm going to drag them to the top of the menu. The home page, this is... Something, this is up to you. Some people include a home page on the main menu, but let me click over back to the front page of the website here. So you can see there's a home link here, but most people know that by clicking the logo of a site, that takes them to the home page. So sometimes you may not want this here. It's completely up to you. Um, some people leave it on there, some people don't. If you do have a home page button, then that should be the very first one on the left because that's just like the most logical place for it. If not, don't use the home page button at all and remove it. So for this site, I'm going to go ahead and remove the home page link from the menu bar. And this is how you get rid of it. You simply click on that, open this up and click remove. Okay, so now after services, I think the next most important thing might be our calendar. I really want people to go to our meetings, our upcoming events, our fundraisers, right? And then probably our latest news. And I'm just going to leave the about and contact page where they are towards the end of the menu. That's pretty traditional on the placement for those. All right, this menu looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and save it and then go to our front page and refresh it and have a look at our new menu. All right, there we go. There's our services, calendar, latest news about, and contact. The menu looks good. So next step, let's go ahead and customize this so we have our own logo in here and make sure we're using our color palette that re represent our organization that match our logo. All right, we're now at the point where we're going to start customizing our website to match our our branding, our color scheme, our logo, right? And so 
when we go in to adjust our menu and how our menu colors work and how the menu looks, we're gonna to wanna to make sure it matches the colors, most likely, in our logo. So you're gonna need your logo for this, assuming your logo has the colors that you want to do your branding with. So make sure you have your logo available. We're gonna to go to a website that's gonna allow us to pick the colors from our logo so that we can have an exact match for the color scheme in our website. So go ahead and open up a new tab. And up in the browser address bar, just type in imagecolorpicker.com and that should take you to this site. So this page is gonna allow us to upload our logo and then scroll over it and see the colors. So let's go ahead and grab our logo. So we're gonna use your image, this button here, go ahead and click on that. At which point we're gonna upload our image from our own desktop. And that will open up your file manager. So just navigate through your files and find your logo. Once you upload it, you'll see it will automatically pull out the colors here. So you have this palette. You may want to download this. It's, 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 I think it's free, but if you click on that, they're going to make you sign up. But we just need our two primary colors from this. And so in this, um, with this logo, you can see I can have various shades of blue going on here. I'm going to pick the blue that is in the, the, the main part of the logo here. So this color here. This is the hexadecimal code I'm going to be using. This is going to be my primary color. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to just take this while I'm here and just open up a text file. You can open up Word or whatever, but paste that in there. That's your first hexadecimal code. And then, let's get that out of the way. Um, I think I'm just going to take this blue here because I really don't have a lot of choices. I could go lighter. I don't want to go too much lighter. Um, I'm just going to go with this blue here as my secondary going to be a very blue site. I'm going to copy that code. And again, I'm just going to paste that a couple spaces down. I'll just remember that the primary is on top. And that's my secondary code. Now, if you have more than two colors, you can go ahead and do that. But just know that the more colors you put in the website, the busier it's going to look. So you don't want to have like blue, green, red, red, blue, yellow, and like just it's going to uh, it's going to be overwhelming for the visitor. So you want to keep it as subtle as possible. Two colors is usually what we recommend, a primary and a secondary, as long as they're a good match. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to start branding the header of our website. So real quick, let me just show you. This is your header here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put our logo here, and we're going to put our colors, our colors that we've pulled from our logo right here so that this really matches, okay? So back in the back end of the website, we're going to go to Appearance down here on the left-hand side, and we're going to go to Customize. So the Customizer has a lot of different settings here on the left-hand side, right? This will customize the colors, the fonts, your blog page, what sidebars you're using, the footer. It has all sorts of different ways of customizing. We're going to start at the very top at the global part right here. And we're going to go ahead and click Global. This takes us to our global settings, and we're going to go ahead and click colors. So you can see right here we have our color palette and these are our primary colors used on the site and we're just going to change the very first two or three if you've copied three colors to our primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. So let's go ahead and add our colors to the color palette. Click on color number one here. Go ahead and select your hexadecimal code. Now to change this color, don't click on this, you might end up copying it, but go ahead and click on these little icons here, show details. And right here, you just get rid of those, paste in the new, get rid of the hashtag number sign, you don't need that there. Once you're done, you can just kind of click off, it'll disappear. Now that the primary color has changed, you can see here that the accent color and the link color have been updated to that. And it's already updated parts of my site. So let's go ahead and do our secondary color. So again, click on the color. Let's pull in the hexadecimal code that we copied. Copy that. And then hit the settings icon for the color and paste it in here at the bottom, being sure to remove the hashtag. Now just click off the color setting and you'll see here, you just scroll up and down on your page, that the colors have already changed. Your buttons have changed, your links have changed, your backgrounds have changed. So now it's matching your branded colors. All right, now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and make sure we 
publish this so that we save the settings that we just changed. So up here, blue button, go ahead and click that and publish. So once it's published, just use that back arrow here to get you back to the main menu of your settings. And then hit that back button again to get to the main menu because now we're going to move on to the header builder. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to customize our header. And in order to do that, you want to go over to the header builder here um, in your customizer. You can see right away you're going to get a notification here that lets you know that this page is using the transparent header. And what that means is uh, maybe it's a little easier to see. Let's go back to the front end of the website. It's easier to see that the, the background, this picture of the children, actually goes underneath our header here, underneath our menu and our logo. So that's called a transparent background. If you didn't want a transparent background, then it would have, um, you know, just a single color like whites or blue or whatever color you wanted. And the, um, the picture would actually start, you know, somewhere below it. So you'd have a white bar there. There's pros and cons to having a transparent background. And the problem that you're going to, the con, the major con would be your colors that you have for your rollovers and links need to be seen, right? And so that the image has to make sure it contrasts enough. It's either darker or lighter so that um, it doesn't interfere with the ability to see these links. So let's go back here in the, in the customizer. We've gone ahead and we are in the header builder here. First things first, go ahead and in your mind, make the decision on whether you want a transparent, transparent header or not. So first, let's go ahead and customize this transparent header to our liking. And then, if you don't want to use a transparent header, we'll go over how to turn this off. And then again, how to customize that menu, the non-transparent header. Okay, so first things first. Back here again, we can either click this, customize the transparent header, or just click this, these are both going to take us to the same place. Now you can enable the transparent header on every single page of your site if you want. Simply turn this button on, which will then give you options to disable it on your search or your blog page or things like that. Right now, this was off and for now we're going to leave it off because that's what the, the template is pretty well made. So we're going to leave it off and I'm going to explain to you what how this works here in a second. But right now, this is off. It's not enabled on the complete website. It's enabled on each page through a setting on the pages, which I'm going to show you here in a second. But let's just know that this is a transparent header here. And in order to change anything on this transparent header, we need to go to the design area here. And this will allow us to change the colors on the transparent header. So let's say we, um, we wanted a transparent header, but our images are all going to be very light. Right, they're going to be suns and flowers and clouds, right? So white font isn't going to work. So the first thing we'd want to do is change the menu color to a, um, to a white, to a black font or something like that. So you're going to see here, you have text link. This is just set to a plain white. You can change this to black. And you're going to see there, all my fonts have changed to black. And then you can change the rollover color to maybe a light gray, or maybe a dark blue, right? And that will change the rollover color. So you can see how that works. So that's how you change the main font colors of your menu. And as for these other settings, we're not going to worry about these right now. Okay, so let's go back up here to the back button. So if you're planning on using a transparent header, you're pretty much ready. Just make sure the menu has the right colors. Now, if you don't want to use a transparent header, then we're going to have to set up the settings on the page. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go back to the front end of the website. And here on this page, this is the home page we've been working on. We're going to edit the page. Now I'm already logged in, so I can simply just edit the page. This is going to send us to the Gutenberg editor, which is kind of that white blank page. So as you can see, we're in the home page here and it's just this big blank white thing. And we're not going to go into how to edit the page right now because that's going to be when we actually do the design part, but we are going to show you where the settings are so we can disable the transparent header. So um, right now you're going to see this kind of blank screen. We're going to go over here to the A sign. This stands for Astra. That's the theme. Click on that. You can see the Astra settings here. And in the advanced settings, go ahead and click on that. And here you're going to see that the transparent header 
is enabled on this page and this page only, right? So if we disable this, which we're going to do, then we've turned off the transparent header just on this page. Good. We've done that. Let's go ahead and just turn that off. And now we're just going to update. This will save the settings that we just did. And now we're just going to click on preview and we're going to open the preview in a new tab. And now we should have a non-transparent heading, right? So that is the preview of the page without the, without the header. So as you can see here, we're going to have to fix the button here because we lost the background color of that. And of course our logo, well, that's not even our logo. So we're going to have to make sure that our logo looks good on this. All right, let's go back to our customizer. That's the back end here. And let's go ahead and click publish up here so we can save our work. Let's give this a refresh. There we go. So now the heading is um, looks right. Now it's easier for us to edit. All right, cool. Since I refreshed, I've kind of gone back to the very beginning of the customizing menu. So I'm going to go back to the header builder. And um, now we're going to add our logo. So let's go ahead and get our logo in here. Simply go to site title and logo. Click on that. And you can see here is their default one. We're going to remove both of these. And we are going to add our own logo. So we're going to select your logo. So you should have a logo ready to import. Um, and so to do that, you simply go select logo. This is going to take you toward your media library. And we want to make sure that uh, we go to upload area here. We're going to select our files. And right there, there is the logo I want to use. I'm going to open it. Make sure your logo is selected and then go ahead and just click select. It's going to give you the option here to crop your image in a specific way. I always recommend not doing that because you don't want to cut off parts of your logo. Um, so you can go down here and skip cropping and then your logo will be adjusted in there. Now, obviously my logo is a bit too big. So we can adjust that. Down here, you're going to see logo width and you can simply just move the slider around to kind of fits where you like it. Um, in my case, I'm just going to put in eh, 240 for the width. Then you have the option to add a retina logo. This is for devices that have higher resolutions so that your logo appears nice, crisp with all the colors. So if you have a higher resolution version of your logo, or if your original version that you just added was pretty high resolution, you can just add that there. Um, it's good to have one here no matter what. I'm just going to use the same one because that's my only option right now. And then down here, display title and tagline. You don't really need that in there. And then finally, you have your site icon. Your site icon is your what's called a favorite icon or your favorites icon. So your favorites icon is um, up here. You can actually see right now it's the host gator icon because that's um, the I we haven't set one yet. So everything has the little alligator in there. So you're going to want to have a nice square version of your logo, of a symbol, of a hand, of a food bowl, of whatever you want that icon to be. So this icon here is going to be replaced with the site icon here. So if you have one of those prepared, go ahead and do that. You can always do this later, so you can skip this step if you want to. But I'm going to go ahead and add our site icon. Select site icon. Again, it takes me to my media library. So these are kind of, you can see here's the template images and stuff that were already added to the site pre-built, but we're going to go to upload files, select files. And here is my favicon. I'm going to open that and then go down in the right hand corner and click select. No need to crop and skip cropping. And there it is. Now just hit this back button here and let's go back to the header builder. Great. So now that we're in the header builder, we're going to scroll on down to this section here. This is actually where the elements of the header get put, like your logo, your menu, and of course the button. And it's the button we're going to work on now. So if we click on button, we get the button name, text, donate. That's what it says, donate. And we get the link. And right now the link is set to a hashtag. And that hashtag just means it's a filler. It's just waiting for a place to go. Right, so our donate page, I believe we just called donate. To confirm that, let's go on. We'll go ahead and set this up. So let's go on back to our pages. We're going to um, back into WordPress again. So if um, if you're a little bit lost or if you didn't have that open, we're in the back end of WordPress and we're in the pages area here, all pages. We're going to find our donate page here. 
and we're just going to view it. Uh, again, I like to right click and open things in new tabs all the time. There is the URL to our donate page. So you want to copy that. So again, you just go to pages, view page. I opened mine in a new tab and then copy that URL. Now we go back to the customizer here where the link is. We just paste it in there. So that is our donate page. And that button now will always link to the donate page. Now, of course, we want to redesign it because we kind of have um, we have a white button and a white background, at least in our case. This isn't going to work. Now, if you're in a transparent header, this might be perfect for you. Or if you change the color of your background um, to a different color, you, maybe you need, maybe you're fine. But for a white background, which is what I have right now, um, I'm going to go ahead and change the background of my donation button. And I do realize I didn't tell you how to change the background of this top header. So I will go over that here in one second. Now for the text color, we're going to change our text color to white. And on the hover, we're going to leave it at white. So now you see it completely disappeared, but we're going to fix that here. The background color of the button, we're going to change to the primary color. And on hover, we're going to change that to the secondary color. So when someone goes over it, it should change to a lighter blue. That I like. That looks really nice. So great, now our button's ready. We're not going to worry about the rest of the settings here because they're set up to the theme's defaults. Okay, so let's go back um, to, let's go backwards. And I forgot to tell you how to change the background here. So the background color here, I'm going to leave mine white because the, the colors of the logo of the people I'm actually making this site for is blue and white. So it makes it pretty easy. But let's say you um, wanted white lettering on a blue background because you had a white logo. And you want to change the color of the background. So down here, in this part of the site, this is your header builder where we've put our logo, our primary menu, and the button, right? Logo, primary menu, and button. If you click on the little cog here, you get some new settings here. And to change the background color, we just want to go to the design tab here. And you can see that the background color here is the default white. We, you could change this to blue. And then you'd, of course, want white font. You could change this to black. You can change it to whatever primary color you want. So you can put your primary color here. And then you just have to go back and adjust your blink colors and buttons and things like that, right? So now you know how to customize the background of the header, how to make it transparent, how to not make it transparent, how to adjust the font colors of the header, the rollover links, the buttons, how to add your own logo, and how to add a favicon. So go ahead and play with those settings because I know some, sometimes you want to try one thing and then try another and then refresh the page. And you know that's just design, right? You're going to try something. You're not going to like it. You're going to try something else. Um, but my suggestion is keep it simple, right? Stick with your primary colors. Don't make a busy background. A clean, plain background is good. Or use a transparent header where the image pops under the back under your header and make sure that you can still read your font. And just keep it clean and keep it simple. Of course, you can always change this later. So don't let this be a sticking point where you can't get it right and you spend two hours and now you can't move on and you can't make the site anymore because you don't know what to do for the header. You can always fix this later. So get it to the point where it's good enough. And then you're ready to move on. Next step, we're going to start customizing these pages. Oop, really quick. Don't forget to publish this when you're done. Now, there's a couple of things to know ahead of time. What we're going to be doing is, um, in some ways, we're going to be reverse engineering how these pages are designed because we installed a template, right? So some of the template parts are going to be perfect just the way they are. We're going to be able to fit our content right in there. Others, we're going to have to delete completely. And in some cases, we may have to add whole new sections. So the template is just a starting point for us. Now, as we design each page, you're going to see me pull open a folder that looks like this. This actually has a folder for each page, and that's how I'm organizing the content for this video. Inside the folders, you're going to see I have the photos already prepared, as well as a Word document with the verbiage for each page. Now, of course, you don't have to be this organized. You can simply just put the content in as you create the pages, but I just wanted you to be aware of where my content's coming from and how I'm doing this. So make sure you're logged into your site. And I know I'm logged in because I can see this black bar up here. 
if you're already logged in, go to the page you want to go to, in this case, the About page. And then if you should be seeing this black bar up here. We're going to edit this page with Elementor. So you can go ahead and click that. Now I'm going to show you the other way to get to this, because sometimes if you're already in the back end of WordPress, like I am here now, sometimes you just want to go to the pages over here on the left hand side, click on pages, and then find the page you want to go to, in this case, the about page. And in that this case, you'll edit with Elementor. So either way, we'll get you to the same page. So I'm going to go ahead and click edit with Elementor. So the great thing about Elementor is it makes it very easy to edit and add things to your page because it's what we call a WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get, a WYSIWYG. And it makes adding things really easy. So like on the left hand side here, you can see all the elements that are available. You have headings and buttons and videos and photos and galleries, all sorts of stuff over here. If I wanted to add some a button, let's say, below About Us, simply click on it drag it over and drop it. And there's a button there. You can see that it activated the button settings over here on the left hand side so that we can adjust this button to the length, the color, the style that, that we want it to have. We're not going to worry about that right now, um, but I just want to show you really quickly kind of how this works as we start to edit process. So if I don't want the button, I can go over here to the icon, the pencil icon, right click on it and I can delete that button. Now as you scroll down the site and you look at all the different elements where they're placed, you can kind of get an idea of where your content is going to go. So this is actually a pretty well designed template that we installed. So it already has placeholders for your about, your mission, your vision, you know, the things that a nonprofit would need. Now you're not necessarily going to use all these. We're going to delete some of them. Um, and some of them we may, we may add some things. Let's jump into this. So let's scroll up to this top section. We're going to change the heading. And to do that, you just want to click on the heading. You can see that activates the title and you can just update the title by simply highlighting the text in here and changing it. You can also edit while you're inside of here. Just simply highlight and type. I can't type today. And you can do it that way as well. I like to do it in the editor over here because this is kind of the root access to it and that really makes sure that things are done well. So go ahead and update this heading as you like and let's move on down to the next section. This is our introductory first statement that we're going to talk about, right? I like this. I want to change this who we are. I prefer having capitals. So capital W, capital A for my headings. And you're going to see this is an H2. That's a heading level size two, right? You can see there's six to pick from here. Your H1 is always going to be your main heading, and there should only be one of those. On any page, you should only have one H1 page. That's really important for your Google rankings, so make sure you have only one H1 on every page, at which point you can have as many H2s as you want, typically three, four, or maybe five on every page, and so on, and move on, moving on down. You can see like this one here, this section here, this is actually an, an H5, which is heading, level, size, priority five, right? So, but it keeps things consistent. All my H5s should look the same. So we're gonna keep the who we are. Actually, we're not, sorry about that. In my content, my first thing that my client wants is what is. So I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna go over here to who we are. I'm gonna paste it in there. So you could start doing this. If you already have a website, um, you can start just copy pasting from there or you can make this up as you go along. So let's start with this section here. This is a great place to put an introductory statement, maybe your tagline, or maybe a portion of your mission statement. What I'm gonna do is pull in this first sentence of this paragraph, and I'm gonna go into the title area. I'm gonna paste that in there. And then I'm gonna take the remaining part of that paragraph that I didn't paste in yet, this section here, and I'm going to put that as the paragraph here on the right hand side. So I'm just going to simply copy paste these into the sections they belong in. Now there's one thing that I did that I bet might have happened. Yep. And this is actually a good mistake. I didn't do it on purpose, but I, I always have to give this example anyway. So it was um, a happy accident. What I did, and you saw me do it, and this is dangerous. And, I, and I, I'm glad I did it, but I, I shouldn't have 
is I copied something from Word and I right clicked and I copied, right? And then I went over here and I pasted it directly into the page on this side. Over here in the editor, it looks fine, right? But if we look at the text, which is actually kind of the code behind it, you're gonna see there's all sorts of stuff in here. Span, style, font, 12, line height, Arial, this kind of stuff. And what it did is it copied the style from the Word document into the website. And I don't want the Word document's style in my website. I want the website's style. So let's correct this. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna right click and copy this again. It's already there. And instead, I'm going to make sure your text editor is selected. And we're gonna copy all that. We're gonna clear it out of the way. And then we're gonna paste in just the text, right? So that all that span style, size, line height is gone. There's no code overriding how this looks. So if you go back to the visual, it still looks pretty much the same, but now you can see it's a sans serif instead of uh, the Arial that was there. But all that code is missing. So important lesson, anytime you copy from a Word document, always paste it into the text area. If not, you'll be copying all the font styles from the Word document. If that Word document has colors and italics and underlines, all that will be copied over into your website and you probably don't want that. All right, so I don't have a need for this one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just right click and delete this. So this blue text here, which is actually a title, I think it's a little bit too long. I'm gonna take the last sentence in here, remove it from the blue text, and I'm actually gonna move it over to the paragraph to the right of it. All right, so let's scroll on down to the next section and we're gonna add some content there. All right, so our approach, this section here, you can change the title of this if you like. What am I gonna do here? Let me take a look at my content again. So I've used this. When I use something, I like to highlight it and I like to change the, um, the font color. I gray it out a little bit so I know that that's already added to the website. So here's the mission. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna put um, the mission in here again, making sure I put it in on this side. There's their mission. I don't need this. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. So good, I have the mission there. If you have a vision, you can add it here how you like. In my case, I don't have that, but I do have um, members. So I'm gonna right click, copy the content from Word, go ahead and select the section I wanna paste it in, go over to the title section there, make sure that I'm in the text editor, and I'm gonna paste it in there. So there's that section added. And now I need to change the title of this section, so I'm just gonna rename it members. And this section here, I'm not using. So I'm simply gonna right click on that and delete that. So there's one thing about this content that I just pasted in. If you look closely here, you can see that this is actually a link to another website. And so I need to have a link on the website that links to this page. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna copy the link that this Word doc links to here. Great. Now back on the website, I'm gonna click on the content box to activate the editor. On the editor side over here, I'm gonna find that United Way of Tanana Valley. I'm gonna add that link. I'm gonna click on the link here. Now, instead of just pasting the URL, URL here, I'm actually gonna go into the settings where I have a little more, some more options. Um, I'm gonna click on that and that gives me more options. So here goes the URL. This is what I copied. That's what they're going to link to. And it's linking. This is the title text. I like that. And I want this to open in a new tab. So this is very important to know. Anytime you link to something that's not on your website, whether it's another website or a, a download or um, um, a PDF, or if, it, if it's not part of your website, always check this box to open in a new tab. This way, they're not leaving your website anytime they visit somewhere else. And now you can click add this link. And you can see now that link has been added to the site. Now I do have an issue here I wanna fix. 
the mission side over here, the font is much larger and bolder, and it doesn't match the member side. And I want it to match, so I'm going to actually redo the mission side so that it matches the member side. So over here on the left-hand side, I'm going to click on this grid, and then I'm going to go down into the widget area. I'm going to select the text widget, and I'm going to drag it over. Now I'm going to click on the mission statement that I originally pasted in, and on the left-hand side here in the title section, I'm going to right-click and copy that content. And then I'm going to go back to the new paragraph I just added, and I am going to go to the text editor, and I'm going to select all, right-click, and paste the content into there. And now I just need to right-click on the, the mission statement that I originally added, and delete. All right, it's looking good. So now I'm going to make these headings here, the Our Mission and the Members headings, larger. So I'm simply going to click on Our Mission. And then over here in the Edit Headings section, I'm going to change this to H3. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the Members area. Click on Members, activate it. Go over here, click on H3. And I'm just going to change the title of this. I don't like Members as the title. I'm going to change this to Proud Member of... Great, so let's scroll on up and see what we got. We have our introductory section here, and then further down, we have our mission and vision section here. Now let's say you didn't have an introductory statement, and you just had a mission statement, and you wanted to move that up. And there's a couple ways to do that, but the easiest way is just to simply go over here, and you can drag, click on this, and you can drag it up. You can see I'm moving the entire section. I gotta kinda push. If it doesn't let you push, you can use the scroller on your mouse. And you're going to see, like, there's that big blue bar. That means I'm going to drop it right there. And so maybe that's the only text you have for this page. In which case, you would delete this by clicking that X. I'm not going to do that because I'm, a I'm actually going to keep this. So I'm going to take this part back. I'm going to undo this. And then I'm going to take this one and put it back up here. Great. So now you can see how quickly you can move sections around. Now let's work on some of these images. Now, it's really important, anytime you add an image to your website, make sure it's optimized for the web. If you put a 3,000 pixel wide, 5 megabyte um, picture on your website, you are going to slow your website down considerably. So, we're going to do a little side lesson here. I'm going to show you how to edit your images so that they are optimized for the web. So that they still look good, but they're a smaller file size and they load fast. All right, open up a new browser tab, and let's go to pixlr.com. That's P-I-X-L-R.com. So this page does change its look and feel every six months. So depending on when you're watching this video, it may not look exactly like this, but you are looking for photo editing. So go ahead and click on that. This will take you to the photo editor. At this point, we're going to open an image. We're going to open one of our own images from our desktop and add it to this online editor. So we're going to open image. And then we're going to find the picture that we're going to edit, and that's this one here. It's the staff photo. And we're just going to open it. This will automatically get it ready for upload to the site. So as you can see, it's already identified that this image is indeed very large, and that is recommending that we already resize it. And we're going to take advantage of this because its options for resizing is exactly what we want to do. We want to make this image 1920 by 1080. That is the standard screen resolution for a, a, a typical monitor these days. So make sure this is selected and hit apply. So here's our image. Here's the tools we're going to be using on the left. Here's our navigation at the top. Down below, you can see right here, it says um, 1920 by 1080. So they've already resized this for us. So this image is actually ready to go as is. I will do another one where I'll show you how to crop so that you can have different sizes and dimensions, but we're going to go ahead and export this one right now. So go to File, and go down to Save. This will open up your Save As settings. Now you can see over here, it's telling you what size the image is, and that once it's compressed, it's going to be now 465 kilobytes. We can go ahead and just kind of check out other settings, the medium settings, take it to a 70% quality, and actually cuts the the file size in half, and then there's the low, which is a 50% quality, and it's then below 200 kilobytes. 
I'm going to go with the medium quality, at which point you just click Save As. Once you find the folder, what I like to do to make sure I know what images are ready for the web is simply add to the end of the title web or opt opt for optimized. So now that I have this ready for the web, I click save and there it is. So it's as simple as that. We now have a file that's ready for the web. So let's go ahead back to our website and put this in at the header. Okay, so here we are back in the in the Elementor page builder. Um, we're going to go ahead and select this top section here. And once that section's selected, we're going to go over to Style. And once I hit that, you're going to see right there is the background image. That's the one we are replacing. So we're going to just, you can either select Choose Image or you can delete. It doesn't matter because um, we're just going to replace this. So we're going to go Select. And then we're going to go to Upload. This is our media library here. So we're going to go Upload. We're going to select the file that we want. And right now we're going to do the staff web size, select the web version, open that, and then insert the media. Now, depending on the image that you use, you may find that it's not the exact fit. As you can see here, some people are being cut off um, and cropped off at the top. There's certain ways to adjust this. Um, some images just may not be ideal for this because every display, whether it's a phone, a tablet, a desktop, or a laptop, is different. So it's going to crop every image in a different way. So if you're looking for the perfect crop for, for everything, it's just not going to happen. It's going to be different on every device. This image does kind of fill the entire space. So there's not going to be a perfect way to align this, but I will show you some techniques here on how to try to make this better. Over here on the left hand side, you can see that the position of this image is bottom center. So the bottom is is, 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 is um, aligned at the bottom and it's centered. We might be able to center center this. And that that's actually a lot better. And that, that I'm happy with, right? But you can play around with this. You can try the top center, which might even be better, right? So again, though, this changes on every single device. So you may want to have an image that has a little more what we would call white space around the edges so that this cropping doesn't um, affect you too much, right? Great. So now we have our top image done. We have our content in there. So now let's edit this gallery. And the way to engage this is to simply go up here to the right hand side, click on that little pencil icon. And then you'll see over here on the left hand side, you have the settings for the gallery. So this gallery is set to have three columns and you can see here it's got three images in it. If you wanted to add an image to it, you could simply edit this. Click the edit tab there. And here you can see, here's the three images. We can rearrange the order that they show in simply by doing this. And if we wanted to add an image, we could simply go here, add gallery, pick a new image down at the bottom right, add it to the gallery. And then again, at the bottom right, insert. You can see here that yes, indeed, it did insert four images, but it bumped it down here. So now I have this image down here. That's because right now we have this set up for three columns. So to fix that, you can just change it to four. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to add some gallery images. I already have some of them designed and ready to go. So I've just changed it back to three because I only have three images. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up my folders here for you again. Now, remember, I told you I was going to show you how to edit your images so that they're ready for the web. The first one was very easy. It was the exact dimension that we wanted. But what happens if we have an image that looks like this? Right here is the original of this event image. And we want it to look like that, right? We have this horizontal one. This is huge. This is 79,000 pixels wide at 17 megabytes. And it's horizontal. It's landscape, right? And we want it to be in portrait mode, the vertical mode, and we want it to be much smaller. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this one, import it into Pixlr, crop it, and then export it or save it. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So back in Pixlr, this is kind of where we left off. I'm going to go to File, Open Image, and again, navigate to the image that you want to edit. And then in this case, it's going to be event number one. I'm going to select that and open. 
So you can see here again, it's noticed that this is a very large image and indeed this is huge. This is almost 8,000 pixels wide. It's telling us, hey, you might want to optimize this and indeed that is what we're going to do. So we're going to leave it at the 1920. You could, if you wanted to, opt to go a little smaller since this is only a gallery image, but um, I like to have a little more canvas to work with. So I'm going to leave it at 1920 and click apply. Great, so now here you can see the image that we're going to be working with. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to crop this to the dimensions we want, and then we're going to resize the pixels so that it's a smaller image size. So first of all, on the left hand side, we're going to find our crop tool that's here and it looks like, kind of looks like a square. Click on that. And now you're going to have some corners or midpoints to work with in order to crop this. Now, if you're going to be cropping multiple images and you all want them to be similar, the same aspect ratio, you know, three by two or whatever, then you can actually change the constraint here to a ratio. And that is what I'm going to do. So up here at the width and height area, we're going to change this to eight by 10. Once you have the crop set where you want it, you just simply go over here and hit apply. And now your image is cropped. Now let's go up to File, Save, and here we can change the dimensions and get it ready for the web. And again, we have our settings here of determining whether we want high, medium, or low. And again, you can see the file sizes here. I'm going to choose medium. And for this image, I'm actually going to change it. This it doesn't have to be a thousand pixels wide. For this, you know, I think 800 pixels wide is going to be more than enough for the gallery. So I'm going to change this from 1024 to 800. And you can see the height changed with it. Those are locked in so that the proportions stay the same. Now I have a 1,200, or I'm sorry, a 128 kilobyte image. This is great. I'm going to save this and hit save. So now we are back here in Elementor and you can see the gallery here. Um, I am only going to use three images, so I'm not worried about this fourth one here. I am actually, we're actually going to just delete all these and replace them with our own. So go ahead and click in the gallery area. And then let's go ahead and just click the X on the pictures to delete all of the template gallery photos. And now you're here, you can actually select files here or you can go back to add gallery. Either way, it's going to be the same. We're going to select files to add to the gallery. And we are going to add, I have these already, so I'm going to do gallery one, hold down control, gallery two and gallery three. These three are ready and I'm going to open them. Great. Once they're uploaded, I'm not going to bother adding captions. I'm just going to insert them into the gallery. And voila. Now you have a gallery. So let's move on down to this section here. I personally love these carousels. They're a great way to show who you partner with or who you serve. But they are pretty tricky. If you put a square logo in, sometimes it looks a little odd. So you, like the cropping of the logos is really important to, to pay attention to. For our purposes though, we're not going to use this, so I'm just going to simply right click this and delete it. So I don't need this anymore, the Our Partner section. In fact, I don't even need this. You can see here this little section divider. It's this little square here. I don't need this at all anymore, so I'm just going to delete it. Having just removed that from the Partner section, I actually do need a small gallery or a small carousel right here below proud member of, because I was given two logos from the United Way and the Council of Accreditation to be added here. So this is how you add your own gallery or carousel in places that you need on your website. All right, so let's go over on the left hand side, make sure that you have this um, little grid here selected so you see all the available tools. And then under search widgets, we're actually gonna just type in C-A-R for carousel. And you can see there is image carousel. We're going to take this and we're going to drag it and we're going to put it right below our proud member of or wherever you want to on your page. Now you can see here, here are the settings for that and you can see that it is not, there's nothing added yet. So just click on the square blank image here. That will open up your image gallery. I'm just going to go to upload and select my files and find the logos that I want to add to the gallery. Here they are, one, two, and three actually. I'm going to open those up, wait for them to upload, and then I'm going to create a new gallery. And now I'm just going to arrange the logos in the order that I want. 
and then I'm just going to insert gallery. So now you can see the gallery, actually the carousel, is shown up here. So over here on the left hand side, we're going to adjust some settings. We're going to change the slide to show to three. And we're going to go down to navigation and we're going to change this to none. All right, so now we have a carousel installed. I could have used the gallery for this just as easily, but um, the carousel is kind of fun to play with. Okay, so let's move on to the next section down here. Right now we have this image here. This is a full width image. And if it's going to be a full width image, then your image has to be 1920 pixels wide. Anything smaller than that, it's going to stretch or it's going to look pixelated. It's just not going to look good. So let's change out this image. So just click on the image. And you can see here, this is an image. And we're going to click over here on top of that image so that we can get our media library open. And um, we're going to have to upload a new file. And we're going to use this one right here. You can see it's 1920 wide. We're going to grab that one, and open it. And you can see I kind of have a duplicate of that there, but that's okay. We're going to grab this one and we're going to insert it into the media. And now we have that image there, which is kind of nice. It's happy. And then down here, um, these counters are great for like on your front page when you want to show people how much money you've raised or how many people you fed or how many books you bought. For my purposes, I'm not going to use this section. So I'm just going to go up here and just delete this section. So I have one more thing to add to this page, and that is going to be the board members. So to do that, I can. there's two ways to do this. I can start from scratch, and I can simply add a new section here. Click on this, and it'll give you an option to add one column, two columns, three columns, so you can see those. Or in the folder here, click on that, you can insert a template. We're not going to be inserting a whole page, but we might insert a block. So click on blocks. And they have some pre-made blocks here. And they have categories over here on the left that you can select from. I'm actually going to be adding board members. So this team category might be interesting to look at. So you can scroll down and you can take a look and see if there's anything here that draws your attention. I like this one, so I'm just going to go ahead and select it and insert it. And simply click on that. And then you can insert. Now I'm going to slide in here um, my board member templates. So in here I have some board bios and then I have three pictures of board members. Open up my board member content here. And I'm just going to put this on another screen here. Um, we are going to start from the top here. So first of all, we're going to click on this part here. And you're going to see that this is called an image box. A lot of Elementor is just reverse engineering. This looks good. I like the way it looks. So how did they do this? Well, they added her image, they put her name here, and they called her the founder. Um, in this case, our name is going to be Janelle, L-L-E, Janelle Chapin. She is the president. And I need Janelle's photo. So um, I already have that cropped and ready, so I'm going to simply click on this, go to Upload, Select Files. In my board members, I'm actually going to upload all three. You can see I can select them all and add them. This is Janelle here, and I'm going to insert media. And we have her photo there. Now, if you want to adjust this image box, the font um, or how the styling looks, you can simply go over to style. And you're going to see here you have all sorts of options here. So the image width is set to 35%. You can simply change this. You can see how she's growing. We're going to change it to 66%. So I'm just going to fast forward here. No need to see me repeat this two more times. Great. And down here, these are actually some social icons, but this is a neat little um, element to add to it because you can also add, if you look over here on the left hand side, add item, you can also add almost anything you want. You could click on this and choose to add an envelope. And that would signify 
email. And then your link, here's a trick for you. If you want to make a link go to an email account, you type in mail to colon and then put the email address, email at gmail.com. And that will actually open up an email client so someone could email somebody. So simple, easy trick for you. That's how you get email. I'll also teach you here how to add a phone number. So let's go here and add a new item. Defaults to WordPress. In this case, we're going to open up an icon and we're going to choose phone. Those are recommended. We'll go here to phone. So under recommended, a phone isn't a recommended icon. So I had to go to all icons, click phone. Let's add phone, insert. And now if you want someone to click an icon and make it dial a phone, like on a cell phone, in the link, you type in TEL colon and then the area code and the number without any hyphens. And then that little phone icon, when clicked on a phone, would trigger the phone to call the person. So we're going to leave those on there, but I don't want, I don't want the Facebook link on there. I don't want Twitter on there and I don't want Dribble on there, but uh, we will have the phone and email contact for them there. And of course we have short bios for each of our board members. So we're going to go ahead and add those there. I'm going to click inside the element. Remember, um, I am just copy pasting from this word doc here, but remember when you paste, paste in the text because you don't want all the word document. I'm just going to fast forward here. You don't need to see me copy paste all these bios. Now let's add phone and email icons to the rest of the bios. For sake of time, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete. You can see there's icons here. For some reason, they're not showing up on mine that well. There they are. I'm just deleting these. So I'm going to right click and duplicate this element and then move it over. Ah, oh, it's not going to let me move it over. So this actually brings us to a point where I can teach you something else, which is going to be very helpful because these situations are going to happen when you're working with websites. In Elementor, there's something called the navigator, and that is down here. It's this icon here, it's like three squares stacked on top of each other, three diamonds. Click on that and your navigator is going to show up here. This navigator represents every section of your site. So if you click on one, it'll take you to that section, right? And so this section here, it's the kids. This looks like this is going to be our approach. This is going to be this section here. And inside of it, you can see there's a column with an image, right? And each time you click on it, it will activate where you're at. So our bottom section, that's this section here, is here. And within this section, you have one column, right? Two column, you see how this is clicking and working, and three columns. And inside each one of those, you can see there's an image, a text box, and here are those two social icons that I can't move for some reason. But you know what I can do? I can do it here. I can simply click on this, take it here, and put it at the below the text editor in that column. And I got it to move. You can also right click, duplicate, which I just did. Now I have two of those and I'm going to actually move this in the bottom of the last column. Whoa, in the bottom of the last column. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, so now I just need to update the email and phone links to both of these and it will be ready. And this page is complete. I now have my about page with my team some of our services and the people we serve, our mission, our membership, some of the happy kids we serve, and the board members. When you're done, make sure you update. That's this bottom left-hand button here. Go ahead and click on that. Now let's preview the page. Click on the burger icon. Right here, you're going to see view page. Again, I like to always right-click and open in a new tab. That way I can see what the page looks like on the front end. All right, we've created our about page and added our own images, our own content, and we've added our board members and all sorts of exciting things. We're going to move on. Our pace is going to pick up a little bit because now that you have an idea of how Elementor works, how to add things, how to remove things, how to adjust the settings, I'm going to move at a little bit of a faster pace as we go through our services page and our contact page. So if you're ready for that, Let's move on to our next page.
All right, so our next page is going to be the services page. I'm just going to navigate over to it. Again, a couple ways to do that. You can simply use uh, the services tab on the front end. Just go to the menu link there, and that will take you to the services page, at which point you will go to edit with Elementor, and that will load Elementor, your page builder. The other way is to go through the dashboard here in the back end, go to pages, and you'll see the services page here, and you can again edit with Elementor. Both ways will get you to the same place. All right, so before we get started, you again want to make sure that you have your content ready. And I'm just going to drag mine over here in the window so you can see it. Um, I have my images ready here. And I have my verbiage, which I'll open up, ready here. So here's some verbiage. So now let's just scroll through and see what this page looks like. So your best bet is to look at the content you have and determine whether it's going to fit well within the design that's in front of you. In this case, I particularly don't think my content's going to fit in well with here. Yours might. And so if that's the case, go ahead and keep this as it is and follow along as best you can. For my purposes, I am going to change this content out. All of this stuff here, I don't like the three column stuff, so I'm going to delete the whole section. Remember, these are in sections, so when I click this, this whole section here is going to delete. I'm going to get rid of that. This section here, I'm going to get rid of that. And this section here, I'm going to get rid of that. So that leaves me with a good area for my services. Right? And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Elementor's pre-built templates by clicking the folder icon right here. In our case, I'm going to insert a block. I'm going to go to blocks. And in the category area, I'm going to search for services. And again, so you can see here, they have quite a few different pre-filled layouts, pre-made for you. Makes it nice and easy. The service I like is actually the one right here. So I'm going to click on this to preview it. And this is going to work pretty well. Image, content, content, image. So I'm going to go ahead and click insert. So once you have your template ready, whether you're using the one that was already built in, or you've selected a new one from the templates that Elementor provides, it's now time to start customizing it so it has your own information on it. So we have two headers here. We only need one. So I'm going to delete the one here called services. Um, there's some gap issues here. You can see there's a big space. We'll fix that here in a second. But right now, we just want to get the content ready. So first of all, I'm going to go over here in my content. And you can see I have one, two, three sections here. So I'll use this first paragraph for the top section. I'm going to right click and copy this. This is my first paragraph. And I'm going to go ahead. Remember when you click on this, you activate it over here. Go to text, paste in the content. You can see there it is. Um, I'm not very happy with how light that is that installed with the, with the template, the color. So I'm going to change that by going to the style. You can see the text color here. They they have a custom color there. I'm just going to hit reset or clear. And that should put it to the default color, which you can see instantly made it a bit darker. Cool. And, you know, let's just keep doing the paragraphs first, and then we'll do the tech, the images second. I'm just going to fast forward through this. You don't need to see me copy paste all this text. So I still have a third paragraph to place here, but I only have two sections. So I'm actually just going to copy a section here so that I can have a place to put this third paragraph. So I'm going to take this section here, and I'm going to copy it. Simply just scroll. You can see it outlines the whole section. I'm going to right click on it and duplicate. You can see, boom, it pops right there. So right below it. And I'm actually going to then take this bottom one, which I actually want to be in the middle, and drag it up so it is in the middle. Now you can see there's a gap here. I'm going to fix that in a minute. But I just want to get this content that I just saved in the right spot. So I'm going to go here where the new content is going to go. Click in there, activate it. Go to text, right click, select all, and paste. So now this section has a gap at the top. So what I'm expecting to see is when I activate this section by clicking on those six dots, in the advanced tab here, I'm expecting to see some type of padding right there, 40, 40 pixel padding. I'm going to change that to zero. And now it's seamless, right? Great. Now let's change these images. So we're going to scroll over here. We're going to click on this image right here. And you can see there's an image right there. I'm going to switch this with my own image. In fact, what I'm going to do is when I go in here, I click on Choose Image, and I go to Upload. I'm going to select the files. 
And you can see here, here's all the images in my services page that I'm going to be able to use. I'm actually just going to upload all of these right now. So I've um, shift clicked. I clicked on the first one and I went to the last one and I held down shift that selected them all. I'm going to up, open all those. So they're all going to be on there. So now that they're uploaded, I'm going to go ahead and select the image I want to use, which I think I'll use this one first. And I will insert it into the post. And there you see the image has shown up. So let's move on down. Let's do the same thing for the other two. This is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to fast forward as I add these next two pictures. So now I just realized I didn't update the headings to these sections. So let's go ahead and do that. This first one here, I'm going to call identify concerns. So click on the heading to activate it and go over to edit heading and just update the title. So I'm just going to quickly finish updating these headings and we'll move on. Now let's scroll up to these blue boxes. I'm pretty excited to be using this for my bullet points. You can see I have four bullet points ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and get one. I'm going to load one up. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to right click and copy on that. And that's going to go right here. So again, select text and paste the content in the text box. Just going to fast forward here as I do the same thing for the second bullet point. So now you see I have six boxes here, but I'm only going to be using four. So what I'm going to end up doing here is I'm going to end up deleting this whole column right here. And the way to do that, you can see every time you scroll over, you see this little box here. That's the column settings. So if I click on this, I can right click and I can delete it. You can see everything automatically fills in. Now that I've done that, I might need to up the size of my font. I'll do that in a second. So now I'm just going to do to the second row what I did to the top row. So we'll just fast forward through this. While I fast forwarded, I also updated the headings to each of these boxes. So be sure to do that as well. So now we just need to update the size of the text in each of these blue boxes. This is just a regular text. And so what I'm going to do is while the text is selected, I'm going to go to the style area. And I'm not going to change the text color, but I'm going to change the topography because our default font size for paragraphs is pretty small as to be expected. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and up it. So there's a little size here and you can just scroll and see what it does. I'm betting around 24 might be good. 24 pixels. Yeah, I like that. So 24. Remember the number you use here because you want to be consistent. And I'm just going to fast forward here as I edit the rest of these to be 24 pixels. All right. So I still have a little bit more content to do here. So you're kind of getting the picture, all right? You're kind of taking your content, putting it in there, making the design consistent, adding your images, and we're going to be moving these around in a second. Every page should have an introductory statement, some type of, hello, welcome to our services, we do this, okay? So there's only a little bit of content left to be used, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this bottom paragraph here, and we're actually going to use this for the introduction to this page. So let's scroll to the top and click on the content that we'll be replacing. Go over to the left-hand side to where the title area is and paste in our new content. And that will replace the template content with our own content. Now there's one thing I don't like about this section and that is that it's pushed over to the right. So we're gonna fix that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm sure this is gonna be in advanced. I hope it is. And you can see here that what they did is they made this 50% percent, you can see the values here, percent to the left. I'm going to change that to zero because I just, I don't think it needs to be pushed over there. Now we just need to update the main title to the page here. You can see here, the program here is called Family Wellness. So we're just going to use that and paste it into this title here. Great. Let's scroll down a bit. So this section here with all our services in it, I want to move this up to the top of the page. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the six little dots, the icon there, and I'm going to start scrolling up, moving up. It may not let me go to the top of the page. All right. If it doesn't let you go to the top of the page, just do it section by section. So I'm going to go ahead and drop it. There it is. And now let's get it above here. Let's go up, up. Let's drop it there. And boom. All right. Great. So I like how this is laying out. Um, so this section here where the bullet points went actually is its own part of the page and it has its own introductory statement. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. 
And then I'm gonna scroll on up to this top section where we have a title and an introduction statement. I'm gonna copy this because I'd like to be consistent. I'm gonna go over the six dots here. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna duplicate this. So boom, there it is, right? And I wanna take this and I wanna drag it down so it goes below this. I want it, this is gonna be the heading for this section here. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna click on it, I'm gonna drag. I might have to use my, my mouse's scroller to do this. And you're gonna see, there's the blue line. I'm gonna drop it right there. So now I gotta update this copied text with the new text. So I'm gonna click on the introductory paragraph. Go over here, I'm gonna select all and delete, and then paste in the heading to this section. So now we'll just change the family wellness heading to parenting classes. All right, this page is looking pretty good. Let's scroll up to the top here and edit the heading to this whole page. When, instead of what we do, I'm gonna call it our services. And now let's update the image behind this section. To do this, just click on these six dots up here at the top of the section. And then click on the style tab and then on the background image down here. This will open up your media library. If you don't see the image you want to use in the media library, you'll have to upload a new one. And then after that, simply insert it. Oh, I like that. That's perfect. The R services, is, oh, that's perfect. All right, cool. We're almost done with this page. So we've got our top section here, our introductory statement, our core services, our parenting classes with their bullet points, and then this bottom heading here, which we're not going to use, but if you recall, I do have one more thing left to add, and that is the referrals here. And so we are going to add a call to action using the referral text as that call to action. So if you come across this and you have more content that you need to add, but you really don't have any more template space available, again, we're going to go and see what predefined widgets are available for us to install. So we're going to again go down to the bottom of the page here where the folder is, the gray folder. We're going to click on that and we're going to pick a template. Now for me, the template I'm going to need is called a call to action, right? Because this is mostly contact us. This is how you do something, right? Once in the call to action area, I'm just going to look through the templates and find the one that I think is going to best work. I like this one here. It's a, good, it's a good base to start with. It's not exactly what I want, but it's close. And then um, I'm going to hit insert. We're going to go ahead and customize this. So if you're following along, I just want you to copy and paste the content that you're going to be putting into this new call to action box and start pasting it into the template. So you can see here, I added all the contact information and updated the header title. So what we're going to do now is make a button for a cell phone number and a button for the email and then we'll delete the content here for the cell phone and the email. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this phone number so I can use it. I'm gonna click on the button so that I get the button edit settings, and then we're gonna go ahead and edit this button. So over here on the left-hand side at the button settings, I'm gonna first update the link to the button. And this is a telephone number, so it begins with T-E-L colon, and then the phone number with no hyphens. And then I'm gonna also update the the text on the button. And cool, so we have caller text, but I definitely don't like that it rolls over green because green is not one of my colors. So I'm gonna go to style and I'm gonna select hover because it's the hover color that we wanna change. And then down here, you're gonna see the color setting. There's that green, we're gonna click on that. And then we're just gonna hit this circle with the arrow to reset the color to the default setting. Yeah, I think I like that, that's good. Now we're gonna do the same thing for email. I'm gonna copy this email, select it, control copy. And we're gonna duplicate this button by rolling over the pencil icon, right clicking and duplicating. And then we'll paste in the email and the link setting here on the left side. And then you wanna add mail to colon in front of the email address. And that way, when they click the button, it'll activate their email program. And then let's go ahead and change the text of this button as well. The reason I'm adding the phone number to the button is because if I'm not on a phone, I'm on a computer, but I want the phone number, 
it needs to be somewhere, right? And I'm, I'm planning on deleting this here. So if I delete this, the only way they're going to know what phone number to call is the one on the button. Or they can click it and it's going to call. And the same with the email. The only way they're going to know who to email is if it's on the button. Great, so now you have a referral section at the bottom. So now let's look at our page. This section here I don't need. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So just start at the top of your page and scroll on down slowly and look for changes you might need to make in the spacing, the padding, the color of the backgrounds. I think when we get to this section here, I'm going to change the background color because you can see it kind of all the same. It's all kind of this gray color. I'm going to change this to white. So I'm going to click on this section here. This engages the top section only. I'm going to go to style, color, and there's the color. I'm going to go on that and I'm just going to make it all the way top left should make it white. So this separates the parenting classes section from the services section above. So I also need to make sure that the blue boxes area also have a white background. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly do that. Cool. One thing I should have done um, throughout this process was updating the page so I have everything saved just in case something crashes. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do that now down here at the bottom left. Update. And then we're going to go to the burger icon top left. View page. We're going to right click, open a new tab. Now just scroll up and down your page and make sure that it looks the way you expect. And if it doesn't, go ahead and make the tweaks you need to make to fix it. And if all looks good, let's go ahead and move on to our next page, which is the contact page. All right, so let's move on to that contact page. Again, you can navigate to the contact page through the front end by simply clicking contact and loading the contact page. At which point, once you see the page, you can edit with Elementor and that will take you to the back end. Or again, you can just go to your pages tab in WordPress in the back end, go to pages, and find contact and again click edit with Elementor. That'll give you a page that looks like this. And we're at this point just going to start top to bottom and again going to go pretty quick. So in the top section here first of all we're going to use our own image so um, have, have your content ready. Again I have my content ready. Here's the image I'll be using. And here's the contact document and that content document looks like this. So there's lots of different contacts in here we're going to be adding, um, but we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so to replace this background image, again, you're just going to use that top section, go to the six um, little dots up there, click on that, that'll activate the edit section area. In the left-hand side, click style, you'll see the image that's in there, click on that, and then you'll be able to upload the file that you want to replace it with by selecting the files from your own computer. And that's the image I'm going to be using. Go ahead and load that image in there. And once it's uploaded, go ahead and say insert media. All right, so this one is uh, not the best alignment. And so again, I'm going to adjust that over here on the left hand side. Below the image, I can see the position. This one's actually positioned to be at the bottom. I think I'm going to change it to be center center. And there we go. That's a much better alignment. Now going a little further down, we have our get in touch message here, which I'm going to use, but I do want to capitalize the T. And now for the address. So when I click on this element here, the icons, you're going to see on the left hand side, it's an icon list. So each one of these is its own bullet point in a list, except instead of bullet points, it's using icons. And so the very first one is the address and here is the text for the address. I'm just going to select all and I'm going to paste in the new address that I just copied from my Word document. So I'm quickly just going to add here the contact email information and the contact phone number. If you need to add another line to this icon list, you can simply add item here. In this case, I'm going to add a fax number. And so I'm going to change the icon because right now you can see it's a check mark. That's not really a fax icon. So we're going to click on the check mark. Go over here and just type in fax. I do believe they have a fax icon. We're going to click on that and insert it. And I'll paste in the fax number in the text area. 
Now, let's say you have a Facebook page. Uh, very important to add that. So let's say you want to add that. You can add that item here. And again, for the list text, but right now we're just going to say um, visit our Facebook page. And then down here, important, is that link. Right? And so you'll paste the link to your Facebook page in there. Right now I'm just going to put a hashtag in there as a filler. That's a pretty common way to kind of fill that area without making it a live link. But put your link in there. And then, of course, you want a Facebook icon. So go ahead and click on the check. And then in the name, you would just type in Facebook and find the Facebook icon that you like. So now we're going to edit the form. Now, this form is being brought in from a plugin. So you actually aren't going to be changing any of the information here. If you see when I click on this, left hand side, you can see it says edit WP forms, WordPress forms. So this is an actual plugin that was installed when we installed the template. So let's go ahead and just update this page so we have our changes saved. And then we're going to move on to this map. So let's scroll down to this map section here. And on the right hand side, we're going to click on this pencil icon. And this will turn on the Google Maps widget, right? Edit Google Maps. So this Google Map widget uses an API to connect Google Maps to the website. And APIs can be fairly difficult to set up. So we're actually not going to be using the Google Map widget. We're going to be embedding the map straight into the website. So we will eventually delete this section. And what we're going to do is we're going to embed our Google Map. To do this, we open up a new browser tab and search for Google Maps. That should give you a page that looks like this. Great. Now just click Google Maps. Now take the address of your nonprofit and put the address in here. Search Google Maps and paste it in there. And then you should see your address show up in the map. Now, one thing to be aware of here, I typed in just the address, but it didn't identify it as the nonprofit, right? It just identified the address and that's correct. But if you have a Google business listing, if you type in your, your nonprofit's name and you have a Google business listing, I'll show you what that looks like here. Here's the Alaska Center for Children and Adults. Here's the Google business listing, right? If you don't have one of these, get one. It's free. Um, and I go over that in other videos. But if you have one of these, then you should actually show up in Google Maps for your business name. Now, the address didn't work for me here, but since I know I'm listed like I did here, I typed it in, I found our Google business listing. Now, when I click this map, you're going to see that it actually has the name of the organization here, the information um, already pre-filled. It knows who we are, right? In the other tab, there's no business name, there's no, there's nothing here because it didn't identify the address with the Google business listing. When I typed in the name of the business and clicked on the business listings map, it did no, it did notice it. So it's better to connect with this here because this already has all the right information that we want in there. All right, so now that we found our listing, right? And it's our name, not just our address. We're going to hit this share button here. We're going to go embed a map. And we're going to copy the HTML. Now that we have that loaded, we're going to go back to our website. And in here, let's just create a new section. So scroll down, click on the plus sign. New full width section here. It's just going to show up at the bottom. Here's that section right here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to embed this code. So we need to go to the nine little squares here. We're going to search for the HTML code. So this allows us to add coding to the website, which is what we have. We have embed code. We're going to take this and we're going to drag it over. Don't let go too early because you want to make sure you're inside that box right there and just drop it in. And then in this section here, we're going to take that code that we copied and just paste it. And there you'll see there is our map. Now, this isn't full width, and we can change that very easily. Click on the six dots that signify the section. Here are the section settings. Go from boxed to full width, and you now have a full width section. We can now get rid of this map 
simply scroll over the section and click on the X, and you now have your map in there. So our map is done. At this point, we want to go ahead and save our changes. So we're going to go ahead and update our site down here at the bottom left. Click Update. And once it's updated, we're going to go to the top left to the three-line burger icon. Click on that. And we're going to view page. And again, I like to right-click and open in a new tab. Click on that new tab. And there you see your contact page. At this point, this may be all you need. And your contact page is ready. Except again, we do have to edit that contact form. And if that's the case, just go ahead and skip ahead to editing your contact form in this video. But I am going to add one more section to this contact page. And this is great for any nonprofits that have maybe multiple people in their organization that might have different points of contact. And that's what we're going to do next. So as you can see here in the content that it was provided me, I have five different contact points to add to the site. And to do that, we're going to be using a template that's built in in Elementor to make this a nice grid-shaped contact area on our contact form. So I have five people to add. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a template from the widget area down here at the bottom. I'm going to go to Blocks. And under Category, I'm going to select Team. Now in the Team section, you have a lot of different ways of showing your team members here. The one I'm going to select is this one right here. Of course, you can select the one you like, or none at all, but it's going to look like this when it gets installed. And I'm going to insert this. This is going to go above the map, so I'm going to click on the, the little icons of this section here. I'm going to drag it above the map and then drop it. And I'm going to change the background color because it's looking like a... It's kind of hard to differentiate. differentiate. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the six icons, which the six dots, which gives me the edit section area under style, background type, classic. I'm going to change the background to nice white. Now, I'm simply going to reverse engineer this. You can see there's a title, a name, and a description, right? For each member. And this is what I have to add. Title, name, and this information. So I'm simply going to just copy all of this here. Go here. In this section here, make sure I'm in text. And paste it in there. I'm then going to take their title, which is the Connections DDRC. I'm going to Control X. I'm going to remove that. And under Design, that's where their title is. I'm going to paste that in there. There's their name. Fontana. I'm going to cut that out. And instead of Amanda Lee, put their name in there. Basic stuff that you should already know how to do, just reverse engineering. So I'm going to speed ahead in this video because I'm going to fill in the rest of these, but you don't need to see me cut, copy, paste, all that. I'm just going to speed ahead and finish this up. Okay, great. So I've added all the people in there, and I had five, not six. So I'm going to take this content here, and instead of deleting the whole column, because what that will end up doing is making both of these take 50% of it, and I don't want that. I still want them to be aligned in three columns. I'm just going to delete the content so that the column stays there, but it's just empty and doesn't mess up my nice alignment. One more thing you may have noticed is that this this long name has bumped down to two two lines, and that's caused an alignment issue here. As a designer, this drives me crazy. I want to have all these aligned to the top. So there's a setting that we can adjust here. If we click on the, this section to activate it, the edit intersection. On the left hand side here you're going to see the vertical alignment is set to middle. We're going to set that to top. You can see that everyone now goes to the top. Same problem here. I'm going to go ahead and go here. I'm going to edit this content. I'm going to vertical align this to the top. So that's nice and in line. Great. Our contact page is ready. So make sure you go ahead and update this page to save it.
And then we'll move on and edit this form so that it's ready to be sent to you when someone tries to contact you. All right, let's go fix these contact forms because right now this isn't going to be sending to us and we want to make sure that we get these messages. So you're going to log into the back end of your WordPress site and you're going to go to the dashboard area. Under here, you're going to see there's a plugin called WP Forms. This is the one that was installed by the theme, by the template that we installed. And we're going to go to All Forms. You can see there's two forms in here. There's a newsletter sign-up form, which we're not going to worry about. And there's that contact form, which we're going to go and we're going to edit. That contact form is this form right here. All right. So once you click Edit Form, it's going to send you to the contact form, which is here. You can see the first name, last name, email, and messages, right? First of all, you're going to want this email to be mandatory. I know it's not mandatory because there's no red asterisk next to it. The message is mandatory, but their email isn't, and you want to capture that information. So if you click on email, you're going to see that a new edit area opens up here on the left-hand side, and you simply want to require it. And you probably want to require their name as well. So click on the name field and select required. So this form already set up for us um, needs to be sent to us. So we're going to go on the left hand side to the settings area. And there's two areas here. One's the notification and one's the confirmation. We're going to go to notifications first. Notification emails get sent to whoever you want to receive the emails within your own organization. So who do you want to get notified that a contact has been made? So in the send to email address, the default email it's going to send to is the admin email for the website. Back when we set this up in the very beginning, when we installed WordPress, that's the admin email. So you may want it to go there or you may want it to go to a different inbox. In our case, we want it to go to info at. So whoever you want to get the email, that's where you put their email here. The subject line, this is going to show up in their inbox. You can change this so that it's something that's more descriptive, like um, email from your website or contact from your website. So this says new entry, simple contact form. This doesn't really make sense, but you might want to put like new contact from website. The from name is you, your website. They just put charity. Remember that was the template name. For this, I would just put the name of your nonprofit. And then what's really important is this from email. This isn't the person who sent you the email. It's not who it's from. This is the email that the website is telling your email client who it's from. And it's really important that this from email matches your domain. So you can put a, a dummy email in here. Like often you'll see people put no reply at theirdomain.com. It doesn't matter if it's a fake or real email address. It just has to match your domain name. So go ahead and put in here a from email. In this case, I'm just going to put no reply at the nonprofitwebsite.com. The reply to email address, this is fine. It's There's an email field in the form, and it's field number one is your email address. It should, should already be set up. And then in the email message that gets sent to you, you want everything that the user put in there to be in the email. So all fields, that's what this tag is here. But you might want to put like, hey, you have a new message from your website. So go ahead and save this. We don't want to lose that. And next, we want to go to confirmations. When somebody emails you, they're going to get a confirmation message. And this is what they're going to get. Thanks for contacting us. We will be in touch with you shortly. Nice and simple, right? You can change this to whatever you want. Um, if your form is for volunteers, thanks for wanting to volunteer. If it's whatever your form is, you can customize that here. You can change this to go to um, a, a new page or redirect to a, a different URL completely, but we're just going to keep it as a message. So this form is set up and ready to go. I'm just going to save it again, just in case. At this point, I go back to your contact page, refresh the page, and then after the page is refreshed, go ahead and test this form and make sure that it comes to your inbox. And that's it. Your contact page is done. All right. So now we're ready to move on to some of our dynamic content, content that's going to get filled in 
as we create content. When we create a calendar event, it gets added to the calendar. When we create a news item, it gets added to the latest news. So we're going to start adding those pages to the website. The dynamic content is where we're headed next. All right, so what we're going to be adding right now is going to be our calendar. And of course, for a calendar, you're going to need events. So if you don't have any events, we can just create some pretend ones. Just use some Latin filler text in there, some pretend images, and set whatever dates you want. If you do have some events ready, then we can do those as well. So here's my folder. I have some pictures ready for each of the events. And I also have an events document. And that events document looks like this. This is just some Latin filler that I got from lorimipsum.com. So let's set up our calendar. Now, if you recall on the front end of the website, we have a menu item right here called calendar. And when we go there, it's basically blank right now. So the first thing we're going to do is just add events, get an idea of what this looks like. So in the back end of your WordPress, you're going to go into your events area, which is right here. And if you just click the events tab, that'll take you to the main events page. Right now, there's nothing here. So we are going to add a new event. And the way to do that is simply go to here where it says add new or on the left hand side, you can do do this as well by adding new. So click either one of those and that will get you to the add new event area. Of course, there you want to start with event title. And in this case, I'm going to be very generic. I'm just going to say event one. And then down here, you want to add a description. I'm just going to paste in that Latin filler that I have. Now let's scroll down and set the date. The date in this case, I'm going to put this way ahead in the future. Let's just make this January 18th. It's going to start at six o'clock and it's going to last an hour and at seven on the same day. So there's your date field. Now let's scroll down to the venue. If your event is open to the public, I do recommend putting in a full name, address, city, state, zip code, because there is a Google map link that can be included and it will be added to the website. So good to have all the information here. Now, if it's a virtual event, you can actually just put that in the website area and maybe put a link to the Zoom call or a link to the website where the virtual event information is. So as you can see down here, if you do want a Google map included, you can just use these checkboxes here to have the information included in the calendar post. Let's scroll on down to the organizers. It might be just you, right? In this case, the ACCA. And you can put some information there. Or if you have other people hosting events for you, you can put in them as the organizer, or you can just leave this blank. And next there is the event website. So if the event is actually promoted on a different website, you can paste that link here. And then there is the event cost. Simply add the currency symbol here and the amount of the event down here. Once that's filled out, you now have the main data you're going to be adding. Now you want to go down the right hand column over here. Right now we don't have any event categories and we're going to leave this blank for the sake of this demo. We're going to scroll on down all the way down to featured image. Now a featured image is not necessary, but if you do use it, then I suggest using it for all of your events because the design layout is going to look a little odd if you have featured images for some events and not others. Um, so I suggest either use it for all of them or don't use it for all of them. So it's pretty much the same way we've been adding images as before. We're just going to click on set featured image, go over here to upload files, and we're going to go into our computer and find the files. Now you can see here I am ready with three different event images ready to go. I'm going to select all three and just get them uploaded right away. Great. So I'm going to select my image and I'm going to set the featured image. And then you'll see it appears down here. Now the featured image is added. We are set to publish this event. So go ahead and click on publish. And once it's published, it should automatically be added to your calendar. So let's go ahead to our calendar on the front end. This is our calendar page and let's refresh this page. And we now see that we have our first event posted event number one on January 18th. There's the image. And if we click on this, we can see the event details, calendar, all the information that we've added. So now I'm going to go ahead and add the other two events that I have. That way, when we 
just the layout of the events calendar, we have some content to work with. So I'm going to quickly do that. So now that we have all the events added to our calendar, let's go ahead to the calendar page, give it a refresh and see how it looks. OK, here I am on the calendar page and you can see here is my first event. And as I scroll on down, there's my event number two and there is my event number three. Now, there are a few tweaks I'd like to do to this calendar. So let's go to the back end and go to the settings area. All right, in the back end, under events, we just want to go to settings. So your settings page should look like this. If this isn't what you see, then you might be at the welcome page. Maybe you haven't gone into your settings yet. You can go ahead and click through that. You're going to find the settings link somewhere on that welcome page. Now, I'm not going to go over every setting on this page. They're pretty self-explanatory, so you can kind of read them and figure out what they do yourself. But I am going to show you some specific things we are going to be changing. So make sure you have the general tab clicked up here. And let's go ahead and scroll on down. So you can see here there's a custom field meta box. We're going to go ahead and uncheck that. There's no need to have that. That just adds the ability to add custom fields to a calendar. That's a bit advanced, so no need to see that. It just clutters up the page. We are going to go ahead and check the include events in the main blog loop. This way, any events that we post will be included on our latest news page as well as the calendar page. But keep in mind, this doesn't always work. For some reason, on some themes, even when this is checked, your events still don't show up on the blog. But it's worth having on just in case it does work. OK, let's keep scrolling. So down here in the time zone mode, we're going to go ahead and set this to use the site wide zone. This will go ahead and adjust the calendar's time zone to the website's settings that we set up at the very beginning of this video. And if you want that time zone to be displayed on the website, just go ahead and click this checkbox. All right, let's go ahead and save these changes. Once your changes are saved, go ahead and scroll back up to the top, and we're going to move on to the display tab. There's only a couple settings we're going to change back here. We're going to go down to enable event views and we're just going to leave the list view. I don't have a lot of events, so there's no need to have a monthly view. Um, I'd just rather have it scroll down as a list. And then down just a little bit further, you'll see disable the event search bar. We're going to go ahead and click this. I don't have enough events that would necessitate a search bar, so we'll just turn this off. Great. Let's go ahead and scroll on down to the bottom and click save changes. And now if we go back to our events page and refresh it, it should look something like this. All right, there's just one last tweak we're going to do here. If I scroll down and scroll over this button, you're going to see that it's purple. And purple is not our branded color. So we're going to need to change this. It's a pretty simple way to do that. You're also going to see here if I click event one and I scroll down, the button here is also purple, as well as the links here below. So we're going to go ahead and brand these to the colors of our website. So to do that, you want to go in the back end of WordPress. You want to find Appearance, which is down here. And then you want to go to Customize. Go ahead and click on that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go to the global settings. And I want to go to the colors. And I want to pick the primary color I want this button to be. And then I'm going to go down here and simply just click on the hexadecimal code to copy it. Now that that's copied, I'm going to go up to the left here and click on the back arrow and click on the back arrow again. This takes me back to the main menu and we're going to scroll down here and we're going to see the events calendar. Go ahead and click on that. Now select global elements. First thing we're going to do is change the font family from default to inherent theme fonts. And then down a little further, we're going to click on the link color. We're going to go ahead and paste in that hexadecimal code that we just copied and then click off of that. And then further down, we're going to find accent color. Go ahead and select the color picker there. Scroll up a little bit here so you can see it. We're just going to paste in our hexadecimal code there as well so that our main accent color is the branded color of our website. And then go ahead and click off of that. Now I'll just scroll back up to the top and publish this to save our settings. Then let's go back over to our calendar page, give it a refresh. And as you scroll on down, you're going to see that our button color is now our branded theme color. That's it. Your calendar is done. All right, so let's move on to the latest news section. All right, so the latest news page is going to be where we're putting our announcements, our 
upcoming meeting notes, information about maybe job openings, or it could be a call out for volunteers. You could put in there a new hire, right? So it's your way of communicating with your audience. And ideally, if you're going to have a latest news page, you want to update it at least once, maybe twice a month um, or more, right? You could update it weekly or twice a week, uh, but at the very least once a month. So if you're only going to be using your latest news page once a year, don't even bother having this section. Go ahead and skip somewhere else. So now assuming you want a latest news page, again, you're going to want to have content ready for this. And if you don't have content ready, again, I would suggest just putting some dummy content in here, some Latin filler with some stock photos, just so that it's created and ready, right? So here I have my content ready. So I have three photos ready and I have my news doc here. And you can see that my news doc has fake titles and short articles, right? And it's all Latin. It, but it's just filler so that we can create and design this page. So let's go ahead and navigate on the front end of our website to the latest news page. It should look something like this. It's going to be completely blank. So the first thing we're going to have to do is connect our latest news post to this latest news page. And that is done in the settings. So let's go ahead and do that now. So let's go into the back end of our website. And here we want to go down to settings. And once we're in settings, we just want to click reading. Now, when we installed the template to our theme, when we installed that template that created our charity website, it should have automatically set the correct page, but sometimes it doesn't do that. So it's good to go in here and check that. So as you can see here, the first setting is your home page displays. And right now it displays a static page. It displays our home page, our landing page, which is what we want it to do. So you can see here the home page is set to home. But our post page is not selected. And our post page is our latest news. And so here on post page, you simply want to go select. And then you want to find your latest news page and assign the post to go to the latest news page. Once that is done, just save your changes. So now when we go to our latest news page and look at it, we should see one post on that page. And that's the post that gets installed with WordPress. It's a simple hello world post, and it's going to look something like this. All right, now let's go ahead and start adding our own latest news. And um, we're going to be deleting this one because this one is not necessary to have anymore. Okay, in the back end of WordPress, left hand side, up at the top here, it's called post. Let's just go to all post. Click on that. In here, we see that hello world. This is this post here. We don't need that. So we're just simply going to go to um, scroll over it and you'll see trash. Go ahead and click trash. And that will move it to the trash bin. Now, it's actually not deleted. It's in a trash section here. You can go ahead and click on that. This is kind of nice. It's kind of like a recycle bin. It's not completely gone um, just in case you deleted the wrong thing. So you can always restore it. But in this case, we are going to empty the trash. So you can scroll over and just say delete permanently. Or you can simply click empty trash. So now it really is gone. Now when we go to all posts, we should see that there's nothing here. And let's go ahead and add a new post. Go up to the top button here, click add new. So now we get to use the Gutenberg editor for real. We've seen this a couple times, but we've always made our pages with Elementor. When you make a post, you don't necessarily need to design a page around a post because you're just putting content down. You just need the article to be in there. So we're not going to edit with Elementor when we make posts. So we're not going to be clicking this button here. We are simply going to use the block editor Gutenberg to the best of our ability. Let's go ahead and add our first article. First of all, this is where you put your page title. And so simply go ahead and type in the article title that you're adding to the page. So this one I'm just going to call it News 1. Then down here, this big white space here, you can simply click in here and you can paste content into there. Or if you want to, you can click on the plus sign here and that will give you some other widgets that you can add to this page, such as images, galleries, headings, lists, or even videos. Um, for our example, we're just adding text in a featured image. 
So let's go ahead and add our content. I'm going to go here to this block. I'm going to click in here to activate it. And I'm going to paste in that Latin filler that I had copied. Now you have to remember, website content needs to be broken up into smaller paragraphs. It's just the way it is, especially for phones. You want to make it easy for people to read. So I'm going to take this paragraph. I'm going to actually break it in half here. I'm simply going to click here in the paragraph and hit enter or return. And that's going to break it up into two different paragraphs, which makes it two different blocks. Now let's check out the settings here on the right hand side. First, be sure you have this cog icon clicked and the post tab selected. Down here, you're going to see you have categories. And you can categorize your post based on whatever category you want. You can create categories for volunteering, for events, for press releases, and it makes it easier for people who visit your latest news page to filter out the articles they want to read. As you can see, uncategorize is already added. This is the default category by WordPress, and we are going to add one here. We're going to add volunteer. So simply click on add new category and then type in volunteer and then click add new category. This will automatically add the category and we're going to go ahead and leave it checked. Next, we're going to add a featured image. So go ahead and click on the featured image box. Click set featured image. At this point, this should look very familiar to you. So I'm just going to go ahead and select my feature image, open up my folder, select the images that I want to add, and then insert the one I want as a featured image to the post. Great. Now let's go ahead and publish this post. Up here on the right hand side, go ahead and click on publish, click on publish again. And now let's go ahead and preview the post. Down here on the left hand side, you can see there is a preview post button, but this actually disappears after a few seconds. So if you miss it, you can just simply go to the preview post option up here on the right. This will open up the post in a new tab. And as you can see, there's our post. Let's go ahead over to the latest news page and see what that looks like. And there you go. Pretty much the same post, except with just an excerpt there at the bottom. We're going to make some adjustments to this here in a second. But in order to do that, we're going to want to have a few more posts added to our site so that we can really get a good idea of how this layout looks. So I'm just going to speed through this and add two more posts. All right, let's go ahead to the latest news page, give it a refresh and see how it looks. Great. Here are our three posts. And it looks good. Looks like a good latest news page. Now let's go ahead and add a sidebar. This is an optional step. So if you don't want a sidebar added to your blog post, then skip ahead to the next section. To do this, you want to go in the back end of WordPress, go to Appearance, and click Customize. This will again take you to the Customizer. And we're in here on the left hand side. We want to go ahead and navigate to Blog. Go ahead and click on that. And then you have a choice between the Blog Archive and the Single Post. We're going to go ahead and start with Blog Archive. Click on that. Now, in order to see how these settings affect our latest news page, we're going to actually have to go up here and click the latest news page to load it. So go ahead and click there. Now, over here on the left-hand side, you're going to see you have the container layout and the sidebar layout. We're actually going to start with the sidebar layout. You can click on them to see which one you like, but for this demo, we're going to use the right sidebar. Go ahead and click on that. So you can see it added a sidebar in our preview here on the right. It looks pretty good. You can see each of the little widget areas there are in their own little white box. And that's controlled by the container layout. And the container layout we are going to use is the content boxed container. And you can see what that does as we click that. That also changes how it looks on the sidebar. I encourage you to play with these a little bit and find the one that you like best. And once you're ready, go ahead and publish. So now it's getting more customized to the way we want it to look. Great. So let's go ahead and scroll on up and use this back arrow again. And this time we're going to go on to single post. Now the single post actually controls the way a single article looks. Right now we're on the main blog page, so all the posts are here. If we want to go to the single post, we can simply click on one of the article titles here, which I'm doing now. And this sends me into the single post. So again, you have the same layout options on the left hand side. So to be consistent, we're going to select the same settings we did for our blog page. That is boxed sidebar for the container layout 
and right sidebar for the sidebar layout. Now just go up to the top, click Publish to save this, and let's go preview how it looks. So we now have a sidebar on our latest news page, which looks like this. But now that we have the sidebar, we can actually navigate to another post. Here I'm going to click News 3, and you're going to see there is the News 3 article, and there is the same sidebar. So latest news has the same sidebar, as do all the articles. So now we're going to go into customizing the sidebar. We're going to go into the back end of our website, and from the dashboard, we're going to go Appearance, and we're going to go to Widgets. Go ahead and click on that. Now, if this is your first time opening the Widgets area, you're going to get this nice little welcome dialog box. You can click through this if you like, but for our purposes, I'm just going to delete that. Now, on here, you have a couple things. You have your main sidebar, which has a, a little arrow here you can click and it will close it. You have your header area, which we are not using. And you actually have your footer, one, two, three, which we're going to be using later on. You actually have a sidebar for GiveWP that GiveWP installed for us. And then you have a place where your inactive widgets go. The sidebar that we're working on is going to be the main sidebar. So go ahead and just click that back open. Now you can see in here, there's already some stuff in here. Here's recent posts, which is probably a good thing to have. Recent comments, archives, categories, and metadata. Some of this we don't want. So right now, I'm going to get rid of the things that I don't want to show on my sidebar to show you how to delete this stuff. So recent comments, I don't even have comments enabled. I'm going to click on this. Once I click on it, I get this little toolbar here. I'm simply going to click the three dots here, the options, and I'm going to go down here. I'm going to remove this widget. I'm also going to remove the archives widget, and I'm going to remove the meta widget. Now, if I want to add something new, I simply go here and the plus sign, and we would add a block. And so if you want to add an image, you could simply click on image. This adds the image widget, and you can click Upload to upload a new image, or click Media Library to go into your media library and pick an image that you already have uploaded before. That's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to select this boy and go ahead and insert him. And you can see there he is added to the sidebar as an image widget. So we can arrange these widgets in whatever order we want. To do this, simply scroll over the image that you want to move. You'll see these six little dots in a grid. Grab that and just click and drag upwards and place it where you want. Now let's add a donation button to our sidebar. Go ahead and click Add New Widget. Scroll down a little bit, you'll see Browse All. Click on that. And then in the sidebar here, we're going to scroll down until we find Button. Once you find Button, I want you to click on it. I'm just going to drag it over to the side here and I'll drag it to the bottom of the sidebar. Great, now simply just click on the button and we're going to update this text to simply say donate today. One thing you'll notice is that once you click on your button, the right hand sidebar opens up the settings for that button element. Here you can change the look and feel of your button. The setting we're going to change is under the width settings. We're just going to click 100%. That way the width of the button will be the full width of the column. Now we're going to want this button to link to our donation page. So we're going to have to go to the front end of our website to get the link to that page. So go to the front end of your site, go to the donate button. Let's right click on this and go ahead and copy the address. Now back in the back end, now click on the button to activate the toolbar, and then click on this link icon here, and this will open up the area where you can paste in the link to your donate page right here. And then on the right hand side, you kind of have that curved arrow. Just click on that, and that will save the link to the button. Now just go to update in the right hand side to save the changes we've made, and we're ready to preview this page. So we're going to go to our latest news page, and we're going to refresh the page. We should see there's the search, there's the boy's picture, there's the things we deleted. Oh, and the donate button has a little bit of a problem, doesn't it? It has white text. 
So we should probably fix that. Let's go back in the widgets area. The preview certainly did not show us that that was going to be a problem. So we click on here and we go to the text area here. Click on text. From here, you can pick the color you want the text to be. I think I'm going to make mine blue. No, wait, you know what? I'm going to make it white and I'm going to change the background of the button to blue. So go ahead and update your settings. And then let's go back to the front end of the website, refresh the page and have a look at how our new button looks. Oh, I like it. I like it better blue. It really pops. Well, that's great, folks. So that is the completion of our latest news page, including a sidebar. Next, we're going to move on to the donation page. All right, so now it's time to go ahead and create our donation page. Let's go to the front end of our website, click on that donate button and take a look at what this page looks like now. And to no surprise, the page is blank because we just created this page as a placeholder for the form we're about to build. To create the donation form, we actually don't do that on the page. We do that through the Give WP plugin. So let's go to the back end of our website. On the left hand side, you're going to see donations. Under there, you're going to go to all forms. So click all forms. Now there shouldn't be any donation forms here because we haven't created any yet, but that's what we're going to do right now. So let's create our donation form. Two ways to do that. You can simply go here on the left hand side and click add form or over here on the right hand side can see the add form button is there as well. Go ahead and click on either one of those and you should see a page that looks like this. I'm going to scroll up a little bit so you can see a little better. All right, so the first thing we have to do is give this form a title. We're just going to call it um, donation form. And then down here, you get to pick the form template. You can see a little thumbnail preview of what it's going to look like if you select which one. I definitely recommend for a basic donation page, either using the legacy form or the classic form. Once you've decided which one you want to use, just click activate. For this example, I'm going to use the classic form. Now keep in mind, if you change your mind, you can simply deactivate this over here and pick a different form. And if you do that, then you can kind of test the look and feel of each form. Once you have that selected, scroll on down and we're going to go to visual appearance. The first setting here is the primary color. We're going to go ahead and change this to the primary color of our website. The next few settings we're not going to worry about. We're just going to scroll on down to main heading. This is going to be the title of your donate page. Currently it says support our cause. I'm just going to change this to donate to ACCA. And below the main heading is the description. Here you put information on what you're raising the money for, how it's going to be spent, how it's going to benefit the people that you serve. For this demo, I'm just going to leave it at the default description here. Below this is the header background image. This will be an image that shows up behind your main heading and description. I'm going to go ahead and click add, which takes me to my media library. And I'm going to find an image here that I want to use for this background. Next, let's scroll on down to header background color. Again, we're just going to make this one of our primary website colors. We're going to leave the next two settings at their defaults, and then we're going to scroll on down to section one, the donation amount. The donation amount section is where people pick how much they're going to pay. Is it 10, 20, 50, 100? And here you can have a headline and a description about what that amount does and how it serves your nonprofit. I'm going to leave these at the defaults. Scrolling down, we see there's the donor information section. And this again is where you're collecting information about the donor. You can add your own headline and description about the information you'll be taking. And then further down is the payment method. Of course, we haven't set up a payment method yet. We will be doing that later on in this section of the video. But basically, this is giving them an option to pay through credit card or maybe through the mail or through whatever payment methods that you set up. We're again going to leave these all at the defaults. And then further down, you get the donation receipt, which is basically a thank you message that gets displayed to the person who makes the donation. Again, read through these and update them as you see fit. Great. Let's scroll on up to the top here and publish this. So we have it saved just in case something goes wrong and we lose all our settings. Great. Now, on the left hand side here, you can see there's more options. 
So the first thing we did was the form template. We've done this section already. Now we're going to go down to donation options. Go ahead and click on that. On here is the different donation levels that people can donate at. And you have the ability to customize this. The donation option, we're going to leave this at a multi-level donation. In other words, they can donate 10, 20, $50. If it's a set donation and it's always 50, then you can click on that. We're going to leave it at multi-level. Custom amount. We are going to allow the person who donates to add their own amount. Maybe they want to donate $500 or maybe they want to donate $9.20. So we're going to keep this enabled. And we're going to keep the donation limits set as this. It must be a minimum donation of $5 and a maximum donation of as much as they want. For the custom amount text, we're just going to leave it at the default custom amount. Now, let's scroll down a little bit further. Here are the preset donation levels. You have a $10, a $25, a $50, and a $100 level. You can change these to whatever you want. Maybe your lowest level you want to start at is $50, and then $100, and then $200. So go ahead and adjust these as needed. Once you have the amount set, you can actually set a name for that amount. Some people will say, you know, $10 donation, bronze level, and a $25 donation, is a silver level and a $50 is a gold level. So you can choose to have text for each level if you want or you can choose to leave them empty. And then also now you can see that the $100 level here actually has default checked. So that means the pre-checked donation is going to be $100. I'm going to change that to 50. And of course if you wanted to add a level, maybe you wanted to add $500 to this, you simply just click on this button here and you'll get a whole nother donation level to add. And so we will add 500 here. Once you're done, let's just go ahead and update this form again. The next tab here on the left is the form fields. We're not gonna be making any changes there. We're gonna leave it at the globals. So we're just gonna move on down to donation goal. So go ahead and click that. So for a basic donation form on your website, you typically won't have a donation goal. So you'll leave this disabled. But let's say you were raising money for a campaign, like new computers or new books or a new printer. Then you'd want to enable this. And then here under goal amount, you'd want to set the amount you're looking to raise. And then down here under progress bar color, simply just change this to the default color of your website. Once you're done with those settings, Go ahead and update the form. So the remaining links down here, we are not going to go over right now. We're going to leave those set at the global defaults. But for now, we're ready to take this donation form and make it live on our website. So let's head back to that donation page. And once on your donation page, if you are logged in already, you simply go up here to click edit page. Now, we're not going to be doing any major design on this page, so we're not going to be using Elementor, the form builder, to make this page. We are going to be using Gutenberg, this plain white basic editor. Over here on the plus sign, go ahead and click on that. And in the search area, type in Give, at which point you're going to see that GiveWP actually has some widgets available in the Gutenberg editor. The one we're going to select is Donation Form. Go ahead and click on that. Now the GiveWP widget is added, and you simply have to go to Select Form and pick the form you want to show on this page. Don't worry too much about how this preview looks at this point, because it's going to look much different once you update this page. So we're going to go over here to Update. And once it's updated, you can go down here and click View Page. I'm going to right click and open a new tab. Or if that disappears on you, like it just did for me now, you can simply go to Preview and Preview a new tab. In either case, this is now our donation page. Great, you now have a donation form on your website and it looks really good. You can see here is our top section with that background image and here is our goal that we set up. Further down, here's those buttons that we set up. We added the 500. Here's the custom amount, just in case someone wanted to add $125 instead. Here's the who's giving section, name and email. And then here's the payment section, which we haven't set up yet. So don't be too worried if it looks like it doesn't work. And then further down is the summary of the donation and of course the donate now button. Cool, your donation page is looking great. All right, so I'm gonna go back 
to the donation form. I'm going to make some quick tweaks. Once you're on the donation form, we're going to go over to the donation goal. Select that, and we're going to disable this. And then navigate to the form template. Scroll on down, and we're going to remove this header background image. Just click on the red X. Cool. Let's scroll on up and update the form. Now let's go back to our donation page and give it a refresh. And now you can see the updated version of the page. The background is gone and the goal is gone. I kind of like this better. I kind of like really clean, simple designs. Besides that, nothing else has changed. All right, there's one more tweak I do want to make, and it's this donate page title. It's a little redundant and it kind of mucks up the design. So I want this page title here to go away because I already have a page title here. This is really easy to do. Back in the page settings, if I scroll over the title, you're going to see there's a little eyeball up here. Well, it disappears when my mouse goes over it, but it's there. And this will disable the title. So if you don't want that title to show, just click on that. Your title will get grayed out and you can simply update the page. At which point now, if I go back and I refresh this page, that title is now gone and the page just looks a little cleaner. All right, so let's go back to the back end of the website and set the Give WP settings. So back in this tab, here's the form that we just created. This is done and ready for the most part. On the left-hand side then, we're gonna go over here to settings. Okay, so back in the settings area here, there's only a few places I'm gonna show you. Most of it's self-explanatory, so you can explore these areas yourself. But the one that I wanna show you right away is how to set up your payment gateway. So simply click on payment gateways. Now, as far as payment gateways go, you have a couple options. You have Stripe and you have PayPal. If you want to use other gateways, maybe you have Square or Authorize.net or something like that, you'll have to get premium versions of the plugin. I always recommend using Stripe. It's seamless, it's easy, it, it just looks much better, and I never recommend PayPal. It's difficult to use, it's clunky, it always tries to force people to log in. Um, and it's just not recommended for, for making a form that's easy to use. So we're going to go ahead and enable Stripe. You can click on the Stripe tab here. If you don't have a Stripe account, I highly recommend it. It's a great way to take funds in. You just go to stripe.com and set up an account. Once you have a Stripe account set up, you can connect that Stripe account to this donation form right here. So go ahead and click connect with Stripe. So I'm already logged into Stripe in another tab. So it automatically pulled in the different accounts that I have here that I can connect to. I have what's called a sandbox here. This is a test one. So that is the one I'm gonna check. And then I'm just gonna scroll down and click connect. Now there's some very important information here about what's called webhooks. And I'll show you that set up here in just one second. So just go ahead and click cancel. So once you're connected on the Stripe tab, you can scroll down and you're gonna see the account information here. So now that this account is set up, we are gonna to have to set up that webhook, that little message that popped up here once we connected. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Over here in the general settings tab, go ahead and click on that. You're going to see here is our webhook. You want to copy this. I'm going to right click and copy. Basically what a webhook is, it allows your donation page to talk with Stripe so that when a donation gets made, Stripe processes it. And once Stripe processes it, it tells the donation page that the donation has been processed. So if you want the payment gateway and your donation form to talk to each other, this is what we have to do. So go ahead and copy this webhook. If you don't do this step, then your emails, which we're going to set up here in a minute, won't get triggered to automate. So this is important, folks. So go ahead and follow along. So go ahead and open up a new browser tab and log into Stripe. Great. 
So here's my Stripe account. This is my sandbox where I set up all my test type of forms. Once you're in here, you want to go over here to developers. Go ahead and click on that. And once you're in the developers section, on the left-hand side, you're going to see webhooks. Go ahead and click on that. At which point, it explains to you kind of what a webhook does. And we're going to go here and we're going to add an endpoint. Go ahead and click on that. Now that we're in the webhook area, we're going to add the endpoint URL, which is the URL we just copied. And if you want, you can give this a description. It's not really necessary, but in this case, I am going to add one. Now we're going to keep listen to events on your account checked here. We're going to keep the current vision here. And now we select the events it's going to listen to. Go ahead and click on select events. And to keep things simple, to make sure we don't miss any communication between our Stripe account and our donation form, we're just simply going to click Select All Events. And then down here at the bottom, Add Events. And that's it. You've added your webhook. Your donation form now communicates with your payment processor. Now let's head back to our GiveWP settings. All right, so back here in the Stripe settings, we've just added this webhook. If you wanted to collect the billing address and billing information of the donor, simply check on this. And if you want Stripe to send the receipt emails, you can simply check here. We are not going to have Stripe do this because we're going to set up our own emails here in a second. I'm going to collect billing details just as a demonstration for you so you can see how it looks. And then later, we'll turn it off so you can see how it looks without it. And now it's time to save changes. Now we've got the general settings done. These other settings here, we're not going to worry about. We're going to leave them at their defaults. Now, if you didn't want to use Stripe and you want to use PayPal instead, let's go over here. We'll click on PayPal. And here you can see there is a way to connect to your PayPal account here. I'm not going to do this. Like I said, I don't recommend PayPal, um, but if indeed that's what you wanted to use, this is the page you do it on. Great, now let's go back to gateways. Now that we have Stripe set up, we can go ahead and select what payment options we want to make available to our donors. First, make sure that test mode is enabled. This will trigger the Stripe test mode so that we can actually have a test payment through a credit card. So make sure this is enabled. Now this test donation field here is actually just for GiveWP. It's going to test the form and not actually test the payment gateway. So we're not going to use this. So you can just scroll over to here and unenable it. And the offline donation, we're going to go ahead and disable this as well. But we do have the Stripe credit card processor set up. And we are going to go ahead and enable this. And we're going to leave it at the default. And I'm going to change the name of this just to credit card. Because on some forms, this label is going to show up. And not a lot of people know that Stripe is a credit card processor. Once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and save my changes. Great, let's go see what our form looks like now. So back here on the donation page, I'm going to refresh this page. And not much has changed up here, but if we go down to the payment information, we now have a way to enter our credit card information as well as our billing details. Now let's go ahead and turn off these billing details so we can see what the form looks like when we don't have to fill out this information. So let's go to the back end of the website again. I'm going to click on Stripe. And I'm going to go to General Settings. And I'm actually going to turn off Collect Billing Details. And I'm going to save the changes there. So let's go back to the front end. Here's our donation form. Let's give it a refresh and see how this looks. And again, nothing has changed except now the credit card information area is much simpler. Here's a tip for you. If you don't have a reason to collect their billing information, their address and all that information, don't 
do it because a form that is shorter to fill out gets more donations. If your form is too long, people just aren't going to use it. If you're asking for too much information, people aren't going to bother. So keep it simple, right? Great. Now let's go back to the back end of the website to the settings of GiveWP and let's click on the email tab. So back here is where the automatic emails get sent from. You have your donor emails. So the emails that the donors get when they make a donation. You have your admin emails, which are the emails that you or someone from your organization gets every time a donation is made. And then you have some of your email and contact settings. I'm gonna go quickly through this. I'm not gonna update these myself, but I'm gonna show you how to do it so you can customize the donation receipts and the donation emails that get sent out to you and your donors. All right, let's get started. Scroll over donation receipt and click on edit. This is the receipt that goes to your donors. This is enabled and I recommend that you keep this enabled. Down here you can see is the email title, the header to the email, and of course the message. So here you can customize the donation message that gets sent to the donor. You can see here there's some fields with brackets around them, like name, like donation, All right? This pulls in the information from their donation into the email. So dear Steve, thank you for your $25 donation on September 14th, 2022, or, or whenever, right? And these little fields are all listed down here. So you can simply customize this email with the user's information to make a custom email receipt. So using these fields down here, go ahead and craft your email that's going to be sent to your donor. Once you've crafted this email, simply go down here and save the changes. Great, let's go back to donor emails. The other donor emails we are not going to worry about. We're not using user registration. We're not going to worry about donor notes or email access. Now let's go to the admin emails. Go ahead and click on that. Again, these are the emails that get sent to you or someone from your organization. So if you want a custom email sent to you every time you get a new donation, simply scroll over new donation. Go ahead and click edit. And here you'll be able to customize the email that gets sent to you or other admins for your site. We're going to keep this notification on. Again, here's your email subject and your email header. And down here is the email message that can get sent to you. And again, below are all the different fields that you can include in this information so that you can capture as much information as you want in this email that gets sent to you and your admins. Now scroll down to email recipients. You can see here it's already set up to my default admin address, which is my info at address. But if you wanted to send this to other people in your organization, just simply click Add Recipient and type in their email here. Once you've added all of them, you can go ahead and save the changes. Now let's go back to the Admin Email tab. Great, so we're not gonna worry about the other emails because we're not using user registration and we're not using offline donations. Now let's go ahead and click on the Email Settings. So this is how your emails get sent. So we're going to leave some of these at their default settings, but I do think it's always nice if you have a good logo to go ahead and add it to the email. So if you want to do this, click on add or upload file. This takes you to your media manager, which you should be familiar with by now. Go ahead and click on the logo that you want to add and down here at the bottom right, choose that file. Now below the logo, you have the from name, and this is what appears in the from field in someone's inbox. So you can change this to the name of your organization um, or the name of a person or whoever is whoever you want to send this email on behalf of. And then there is the from email. Now this is important. This from email is actually my business email, but the email doesn't match my domain, which is a nonprofit website there is a chance that this email is gonna get blocked by email clients because it's gonna look like spam because it's not being sent from the same domain name as the website. This is where the no reply email comes in. So I'm gonna change this. I'm simply gonna put in here no reply 
at thenonprofitwebsite.com. Now, don't worry if this email actually doesn't exist. That won't matter. We just want the emails that get sent will look like they're coming from my website because the domains match, and there's less chance that it ends up in a spam box or being completely blocked. At which point, I'm going to go down here and save changes. And then the last setting is your contact information setting. Go ahead and click on that. Here, you want to update this to the email address that you want any correspondence from GiveWP to go to. And this doesn't have to match your website's address. This could be anyone's email address that you want. And then down below is the offline mailing address. We're not using offline donations, so we're not going to worry about that. But do update your admin e email address if needed. And once you do that, scroll down and save your changes. Now our donation form is ready to be tested. So without further ado, let's go ahead and go to our donate page. Let's give it a refresh so that all the setting changes that have been made get added. And let's go ahead and do our test donation. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this at $50. I'm going to fill in my name and I'm going to use a different email. And then down here at credit card information, be sure that test mode is enabled. That's the default setting, so it should be set up. And then we can use a test credit card. Now this only works for Stripe. If you use PayPal, I'm not sure if it's possible or what credit card number to use for the test, but for Stripe, you simply use credit card number 4242-4242-4242-4242. And then the CV can be any three numbers you want. The cardholder name can be whatever you like. And then the expiration can be any date in the future. So now that the credit card payment is set up, we can scroll on down to our summary and we can donate now. Go ahead and click donate. This should send you to the donation confirmation page that looks something like this. Congratulations, folks. You have set up a donation page that works with a payment gateway. You can now get online payments. Now let's check our email to make sure our donation receipt and our donation notification arrived. So here you can see is my donation receipt for the donation I made. And here is my donation notification, which goes to my admin. So now that the tests have been done, you can go ahead and make this donation page live by turning off the test donation setting. To do that, let's go back to the GiveWP settings. Once in the back end, we want to go to Payment Gateways. Go ahead and click on that. And here, where it says test mode, we are now just going to disable the test mode. Once you've done that, scroll down, save your changes. And now let's go back to that donation page. Let's go ahead and refresh this page. And as you scroll down, you're going to see here where the credit card information is. That test notice that was here is now gone. This is now live and taking live online payments. Congrats, you have a real live donation form. All right, so now it's time to design our homepage. This is our final page that we have to design. So go ahead and navigate to your homepage. And if you're already logged in, you can edit with Elementor. Go ahead and click that. And here we are in the back end of Elementor. So your homepage is basically a portal into your website. So there's not a lot of new or fresh content on here. It's going to be quick access to the important pages that people want to see on your site, your services, your events, your calendar, your donation page, whatever you feel are the most prominent and most important pages on your site should be featured here on your homepage. So I'm going to give you an overview of what we're going to be doing. This top section here is just going to be our welcome message and is going to link to our donation page. This section here is going to be great for our about page, what we do, who we are, this section here. Down here, the what we do with these bullet points, this is going to be our services area and we're going to be linking from here to our services. This section here, I do like these counters. They really show the impact you have in your community. 
but my nonprofit doesn't really have a use for these. So I'm most likely going to be deleting this. But if you have numbers that you want to show off, by all means, this is the place to do it. And then down here is a simple gallery. We may add a photo or two in there. And then this section here are partners. This section here I've shown on other parts of this video, so I'm not going to go in detail on what to do or how to update this. But I do suggest using some type of carousel slider like this to showcase your partner agencies or your affiliations or your accreditations. This is a great place to put that type of information to gain you credibility and authority. All right, so let's start at the top. So this section, let's go ahead and I'm just going to change the background image right away. So make sure you have a good high resolution image ready for this. I'm going to go ahead and click on the dots up here. So I engage the section. I'm going to go over here to the style area. And there's our photo. So I'm going to click choose image. Now you can, if you like, go ahead and select an image you've already used. But for this demonstration, I'm going to add a new one. So I'm going to go to upload files. Select files. And once here, I'm going to select the file that I'm going to be using for my home page. I believe I'm going to use this one. Once that's checked, I'm going to insert the media. And now we have a new background. Of course, you're going to want to change your headings and titles here. So you can go ahead and do that. So just click on this small subheading here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And that engages the title over here, at which point you can add whatever subheading you want to hear. Maybe it's your tagline, right? Once that upper tagline is complete, move on down here to the main heading of your website. This could be a simple welcome message or maybe a, a brief summary of your mission or another type of headline. And then down here is your button. And this we're going to make the donation button here. So simply click on the button up here where it says text. You can change that to support our cause or donate now. And then the link is going to be linking to your donation page. To quickly get that, simply go to the front end of your website, right click on the donation button, copy the link address, Let's go back to the editor, and we will paste in the link there. Now you can see here, I have a little bit of an issue that my image is pretty bright and the white lettering is a bit blown out. There's a quick way to fix this. We're just going to add a little bit of a color overlay on top of this background. So again, select this section by this edit section area here. Make sure you're on the style tab and then go down to background overlay. Go ahead and click on that. At which point you want to select the background type as classic and simply pick a color. So click the color swatch. We're going to set this to black. You can see how that darkened it up. And then here you can change the opacity. So maybe you want a little darker. Maybe you want a little brighter. I pretty much thought that was pretty good the way it was. So I'm going to leave it at 0.5, which is 50%. Great. Now our top header is ready. Let's go on down to the next section. This is going to be our about area. So in this section, we're going to change the title from our impact to about us. And then here we can go ahead and add a brief statement about who we are. What I like to do is go to the front end of the website, navigate to the about page. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to find a good sentence that helps introduce the organization to our visitors. So I'm actually just going to copy this right here. And then I'm going to click on this box here to activate this big title, this title here. And over here, I'm going to paste in that sentence. And then down here, I might get rid of this. Or in this case, I think I'll just copy paste this second sentence. Of course, you could also create new content for this section and just make it a simple summary of your about page. Great, now that I have that pasted in, let's move on down to this read more link. This is actually a button. So go ahead and click on that. You might want to change read more to uh, learn more. 
And then again, we need a link. So let's go back to that About page. In this case, I'm just going to copy the URL straight from the browser. Back in the back end, I'm going to paste that About page link there. So now that's linked. Now, if you don't like the styling of this button, you can always change that in the Style tab here. So click on the Style tab here. It's kind of hard to tell that this is a button. But if you go here to the color, which is the background color, this bottom row here, this is actually the opacity. So let's turn that all the way to the right. And let's go ahead and make it white. Now, it's a pretty narrow button. So down here at the padding, we're going to change it from 0. Let's go ahead and change that to 18. That makes the button a lot bigger. And then, of course, this text color we need to change. So let's go ahead and change that to one of our default colors. Paste it in there. Now it looks a bit more like a button. So now let's go ahead and update this image to the right. So I'm simply going to click on the image. You can see over here I have the image settings. I'm going to click on the image to choose a new image. And I'm going to upload a new image that I have ready in my files. In fact, I'm going to upload the other image I have ready as well. Great. And I'm simply just going to select this image. And I'm going to insert it into the media. Now that the About section is ready, we're going to scroll on down to our services. I like this What We Do statement. It's perfect, except I don't like that it's not capitalized. So I'm going to just go in here and capitalize We and capitalize Do. Also, there's another thing that they're doing, which we saw earlier in this, in this video, is that this alignment is really kind of funny. I know they do that on purpose, but I don't like this. So I'm going to click on this title section here to engage the settings area on the left-hand side. I'm going to go up to Edit, and I'm going to see that this padding here, which is 50% to the left, that's this white part here. I'm just going to change that to zero. And now we have a full width text area. Now the question is, what am I going to put here? Again, you can just put in original text here. You can just make it up. Or in our case, I am going to go to my services page once on the service page, I'm going to scroll on down. I'm going to find a good introductory paragraph. In fact, this one serves really well. So I'm simply going to right click and copy my introduction paragraph from my services page. I'm going to go to the home page, what we do section, make sure that's engaged. And then on the content tab on the left hand side, I'm going to paste in that new information. Great. Let's scroll on down to the next section. Now this section here is perfect for highlighting the things that you do. The services, the projects you're working on, the people you serve. So I'd suggest if you have three or four services, you put a brief introduction to them in this section here. This type of section we've edited several times in this video already. So I'm not going to go through that process now. But as a really quick overview, simply just click on the boxes you want to edit and update the content area here on the left-hand side. Now, I do want to have a, a button in this section, but this one's going to need a little more work to get it the way I want it. So I'm just going to delete it, and we'll remake a new one here. Now that that's gone, I'm going to create an inner section. I'm going to put it inside this What We Do area. So make sure you have your Elementor, this, uh, these nine square grid selected so that you're seeing all the widgets. You can see that there's an intersection right here. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to drag it over. I'm going to drop it right below that content. And then I'm going to take this content by clicking on the edit button with my left mouse and dragging it into the left section of the what we do. Great. So now that I've moved that text over here to the left side, I'm going to add a button below this for a call to action. So again, make sure that you have the widgets area selected in Elementor. We're going to go down here and we're going to find the button widget and we're going to drop that in here just below. Great. So now we have this button here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to update the text. I'm just going to simply put our services and I need to link it to our services page. 
So back on the front end of the page, I'm going to highlight the URL of the services page that was already open. I'm going to paste that in there as well. I'm going to align this button in the center. And then I'm going to go to the Style tab. I'm going to update the colors. So the text color, I'm going to make white. And the background color, I'm going to go ahead and again copy our default blue color and paste that in here. Hmm, that looks much better. Great. And then on this side over here, I think I'm going to put an image. So again, I'm going to hit the um, that grid up here that sends me back to the Elementor widgets area. I'm going to find the image widget. I'm going to drag that over to the right and drop it in there. And then I'm going to add the other image that I uploaded to the site. Click on the image, find the image that I like, and then I'm going to insert it. Great. I really like that. Now as I scroll on down, there's this number section here. I'm not going to use this section, but I'm going to leave it on here because I do like these sections. And if you do have numbers you want to put in here, go ahead and add them. If not, simply delete it. But since I'm keeping it, what I want to do is I want to give some separation between this what we do section here, including these blue boxes, and this our numbers area. To do that, I'm simply just going to change the background color. So this our numbers section, I'm going to click on the edit section area here. On the left hand side, I'm going to go to style. And then on color, I'm going to click on that color swatch. I'm going to just change it to white. Once that's done, you can see that's changed the background. And now it's just a little more separation between this section here and this section here. In fact, to make it a little more obvious, I'm going to make one more adjustment. These four boxes here, I think a little bit of padding below it so that this gray background goes below these boxes. It's going to make it a little better. So again, I'm going to engage that section by clicking on the Edit Section button for these boxes. And then under the Advanced tab, in the Padding area, I'm going to disconnect the links here so that it doesn't link left, right, and top. And once I've done that, for the bottom, I'm going to change that to 56. Yeah, that looks good. That gives me enough separation. So that separates it even more. Great. Let's move on down. And then for this section here, this gallery, we have edited this type of gallery before on other pages. So again, I won't spend too much time here, but I am just going to click on the edit button here on the top right to get the gallery settings up here. I'm going to keep this on my page, but I'm going to update it with some of my own photos. So I'm going to scroll over the image gallery section here. Just click on the pencil icon. I'm going to remove these by clicking on the X of each one. And then I'm going to, on the left hand side, I'm going to add to the gallery. Click on that. That takes me back to my media manager. And in here, I'm going to select three photos that I think are going to work out great for our front page. So it's important to remember when you add images to a gallery that the images need to be the same dimensions. If not, they'll look funny next to each other. So here I have a 1920 by 1280. Here's another image that's 1920 by 1280 or 1281. That's close enough. And then this image here is also 1920 by 1280. So these three images should look good together in this gallery. I'm going to add them to the gallery. I'm going to arrange the order just a little bit and I'm going to insert them into the gallery. Great, so there's three new images added to the gallery. Gives the, um, gives the site some fun. At this point, I'm going to update this page to save the settings. And then I'm going to go up to the burger icon here. I'm going to go over view page. I'm going to right click and open it in a new tab. We're going to see what our website looks like now. So here is the front page design. Oh, I like that. We do have a little bit of an issue here. You can see that the Our Partners part 
not a lot of spacing there. And actually, I don't like that font size. So I am going to adjust that. So let's go on back to the editor. So this is the section I want to fix. I'm going to click on the edit section area here. And then here on the left hand side, I want to go to the advanced settings. And I want to set a padding for the top. I'm probably going to make it around 64 pixels. Oh, that looks much better. Great. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on the R Partners. Because I think that should be a bit bigger. Once I click on that, you can see over here in the heading settings, the HTML is set to H6. That's pretty much the smallest it can go. I'm going to set it to H3. That's, I think that's much better. Great. I'm going to update that. I'm going to go back to the front page and refresh it. Let's go ahead and scroll on down and make sure that that update worked. There it is. That looks really good. Okay, next thing I do is just make sure all your links work. So I suggest clicking on every link on your front page and making sure that they go to the pages that they're supposed to go to. Great folks, we are almost done with this website. The last thing we're gonna be working on now down here at the bottom, we have this footer area that we haven't touched yet. So we're going to go ahead and update this because this is a global element and what we do here affects every page on the website. All right, so now it's time to update the footer of our page. And the footer, as with every website, is located down here at the bottom of this site. And the footer is what's known as a global element. So if you change this, it's going to be changed on every single page. So it's actually a very important element. And we're going to go into the settings here, and we're just going to adjust these to, um, to customize it so it matches better with our website and what we're doing. All right, so go ahead and log into the back end of your website. Here I am in the dashboard, and the settings for the footer are under Appearance, Customize. So go ahead and click Customize. Now we've been in this customizer several times already. We did some of our global colors here. We built our header here and now we're going to do our footer so you're going to look for the footer builder which is located here go ahead and click on that great when you do that you're going to see down here at the bottom you have three different kind of rows here and each one of these have elements in them and up above this you can see a preview of what the footer looks like it begins at the top here give us a hand it includes this whole blue section and then below it continues with this black section down here. So there's different elements within this footer that make this design possible. And what we're going to do is start from the top to the bottom. And that's going to be starting with this first HTML one here. You can either click that, or if you want to, you can click on give us a hand and just click the edit button. Either way, that should open up the sidebar here on this side. Now, at first impression, you might think, hey, there's nothing here. But the thing is, remember, this is white text, and we're looking at it with the visual editor. If we click on the text editor right here, you're then going to see, yes, indeed, there is some text here. Now, this is actually a good spot for a call to action for donations. So I would recommend keeping this that way. So go ahead and update this text as you see fit. I'm just going to type in here, support our cause. Great, so that is updated. Now below that is this much larger text, which might be a you know more pronounced call to action here. Give them a reason, right? And so again, you can just click on the edit button here, or like I said down here, you can just click on the second element in this row, it's the HTML2, I'm just gonna click on that. Both of them again, send me to the same place. And again, you're gonna see a big white area here because we're looking at the visual editor. Go ahead and click on text. And you'll see there, there is your your text there. So go ahead and put in some more text here. I'm just going to add your support makes a difference in a child's life. Again, fairly generic. I hope you can come up with something better. Great. So those two HTML elements, we can edit here in the customizer. The widget though, if I go ahead and click on this, you're going to see it's telling me to go to the block editor. So we're going to do that here in a second because I don't want to jump back and forth from this page in order to do that. So just remember that widget number four widget number one and widget number two all need to be edited when we get into the block editor for the widgets. Now this widget here, 
which is our address widget, also has a social widget below it. And this one we can edit. So go ahead and click on that. Left hand side here, you're going to see all the different social media links that you can have. You can turn these on and off simply by clicking the little eyeball icons. And so LinkedIn is now gone. And if you want to add the link to your account, you simply click on it. So let's say I need to add a Twitter link, click on it there. And then here under the URL, go ahead and paste in your Twitter address. Now, if at some point you wanted to change how the icon looks, let's say I didn't like the Twitter bird, I wanted something else. I click on Twitter. I can go to the icon area here. I can click on the X that will delete it. And then in the arrow over here, simply click on that. And I can type in here, search icons, and I can type in again, Twitter. And now I have a couple different choices. So maybe I wanted to use this Twitter icon instead. And if you're an organization that has a lot of different social accounts, you can certainly add new ones. Simply go down here, select what you want to add. In this case, maybe we'll add an email address and then add social icon. You can see over here, I now have an email address added. So go ahead and customize this with the social accounts that you have, or possibly you can add an email like I just did. Now to finish adding my email, I'd simply click on this. And in here where it says URL, Remember, if I want an email address, I start with mail to colon, then I can put the full email address. So mail to colon info at the nonprofit website.com. And that will open up a mail client when someone clicks on it. Great. And then the final thing we can update here is going to be our copyright information. So if you go down there at the bottom and click on copyright, you'll see on the left hand side a way to edit the copyright information. This content in brackets is actually pre-filled. Like this will always pre-fill the current year. This will always pre-fill the copyright symbol. You can see that over here. And this will always pre-fill the site title. And the site title here is a nonprofit website. So if this is not how you want it to read, if you didn't want the nonprofit website or the full name of your nonprofit or whatever, simply get remove that and type in something else. And you can see that then shows up here at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And you don't need to have powered by on there. So you can remove that. A lot of times this is where your web developer might put site made by and then link to their own business website. So this is mostly updated. Now we have to go to the widget area and we have to update widget number one, two, and widget number four. Before we do that, make sure we publish this. All right. Now, Let's go ahead and hit the X on the left-hand side. We're going to go to the widget area. And that is under appearance, widgets. All right, so I'm going to minimize this so I get a little more real estate here. We are looking for widget number one, two, and four. And here they are, footer builder one, footer builder two, and footer builder four. So go ahead and we'll start from the top here. Click on footer builder one. And this is where the email signup was. If you have a newsletter, we're going to go ahead and delete this. So just go ahead and click on this. And once you do that, you're going to see the three dots here. Go ahead and click on that. And we're just going to remove this widget. Instead, what I'd like to do is add our logo. So now we're going to hit the plus sign here. And we're going to find the image widget. Click on that. And then from here, you can either upload a new one or go to your media library and find one or insert it from somewhere else. I already have a logo in my media library, so I'm going to click here. And in my media library, I'm going to find my square logo, which is this one right here. And I'm going to hit select. So now there's a logo there in widget number one. All right, let's close that to give us some real estate. Now let's go ahead and open up footer builder widget two. And you can see here is your contact information. So I want you to go ahead and click inside here. And you can see this is a custom HTML and it's going to probably be blank here. And then if you click inside there, you're going to see there's the HTML and it's half hidden. It's just messy. So what we're going to do, remember, this is our contact area. We're just going to get rid of this HTML. It doesn't need to be custom HTML. So we're going to click on the three dots here and we're going to remove this widget. So now there's nothing in here. Once you deleted that widget, we're simply going to go in here and we're going to add a new block. In this case, we're going to add a paragraph. And here we're just going to put in our address. 
Once I have my address in there, I'm actually just going to highlight it and make it bold. And then instead of hitting enter for a new line, I'm going to hit shift enter, which just breaks it down a line. It's, it's not a new paragraph, it's just a new line. This keeps my address nice and neat and close to each other. I'm going to add my phone number here. Again, I think I'm going to want to make that bold. Oh, and I forgot, I actually should have a header above this that says contact. So we're going to add a block. We're going to add a heading. And our heading is simply going to say contact. And then we're going to use this up arrow here as we go over it and put that above it. So contact, and then it should be there. Once we have our heading set, we're going to update the color of this because I believe our contact heading is not going to be white. And remember, it's on a black background. So over here on the left hand side under text color, click on that. We're just going to select white. And then, of course, it disappears because it's white, but at least that's going to show up. As far as the text down here goes, I believe the default color for the footer is going to be white, so we're not going to worry about that. Let's go ahead down here to footer builder widget number four. Open that one up. You can see in here is our donate button. Go ahead and click on that. And when you click on this, you're going to see this is actually made with a text editor. And it actually has... Oh, once I click text, it's giving me a warning that there's custom HTML, right? So this isn't made that well. So we're going to go ahead and dismiss this notice. We're going to see here, this is actually just um, some custom coding that they put in here to make a button. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to delete this because we don't want to make a button this way. This is old and that we already got a warning that it's outdated. So we're going to go ahead and put three buttons here and remove this legacy widget. Great, now that that's deleted, we're going to go here and we're going to add a new button. Simply click on the plus sign and here you see buttons. And then here's our button. It says add text here. And we are just going to add text. It's going to say donate today. And once we have that donate today in there, we are going to have to get a link to our donation page. I don't remember that offhand. So I'm simply going to go to the front end of my website, which is here. Go to the donate button there. Right click and copy that link. Go back to the widget area and I'm going to hit the little link icon here and where it says search or type URL, I'm going to paste the URL there and I'm going to hit the little arrow and that will make that donate button link to the donation page. Now with the donation button selected over here on the right hand side, I'm going to want to set the alignment to justify. So this button is now in the center. Once done, I'm going to go ahead and just update your widgets area. Now let's go ahead to the front end of our website. Click on the refresh button and see what our footer looks like. Well, great. There we have our footer. We have our support our cause with our new statement and a link to our donation page. Our logo's here and then our contact information is over here with our social media links. Good. You know, I think that context may be a little too big. I'm going to quickly just go back to the widgets area. Go to widget number two. I believe that's what that was. Here, it's white, if you remember, so it's kind of not seeable at this point. But I'm going to click on it. I'm going to switch H2 to H3 just to make it a little bit smaller. Give that baby an update. Go back to the front end of the website. Give it a refresh. And yeah, it's a little bit smaller. I think I like it better that way. So there's one more thing I'm going to do here. You see how the logo and the contact title line up horizontally at the top? I think I prefer them to line up more in the center, kind of vertically aligned center. So I'm going to change this, and this is how we do that. Let's head back to the back end of the website. On the left hand side, we're going to click Customize. Once we're back here, we're going to go back to the footer builder, click on that. And I'm not sure I like the alignment of this area here, of the contact and the logo. So that row is right here, and here's the row settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then if you scroll down on the left-hand side here, you're going to see there's the vertical alignment. I'm just going to switch that to middle. It gives me a little bit of a preview. Let's go ahead and publish this and see what it looks like on the front end. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page. 
And you can see the alignment just changed a little bit over there on the right hand side. Yep, I think I like that better. Great, so now your footer is updated and should be the same on all pages. All right, we are nearly complete with making this website. And right now we're gonna go into kind of a secret power I'm gonna teach you about. And this is how to make your website mobile friendly. All right, here I am on the front page of the website. And this will actually do as a good example for what I'm about to show you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go up here and edit this with Elementor. This will bring you to the back end editor, which we're all familiar with. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the responsive mode so we can test how it looks on a mobile device. To do that, you simply wanna go down here to the bottom left-hand side, and you're gonna see an icon here that is, it's really tiny, but it's a screen and a phone kind of stacked on top of each other. Just go ahead and click that. And when you do that, you're gonna notice that a new bar shows up here at the top. And what this is, is this represents what it's gonna look like on a desktop. Or if you want to, you can check it out on a tablet. Go ahead and click that. Or if you'd like to, go ahead and check it out on a mobile device. Go ahead and click that. Great. So now you can scroll up and down and see what your site looks like when it's on a mobile device. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you how you can edit how it looks on a mobile device and not affect how it looks on a desktop. So let's scroll on down. We'll find a couple areas we're gonna fix and those will serve as a good example of how to do it. All right, so I'm scrolling down and this section here actually looks pretty good. I like how it's um, aligned left. It looks really nice. So we're gonna keep scrolling on down into the next section. Now this section here, maybe we wanna change the alignment on this. Our what we do and our paragraph are both aligned to the left, but our button is aligned in the center. So this looks a little, a little wonky. So I'm gonna show you how to adjust some of this. So let's say we wanna change what we do to align center. Go ahead and click on the element. And then over here in the left-hand side, you're gonna see here is your alignment. And since we're in a mobile view, you're gonna see right here, there's a little mobile symbol here. That means that this setting here can be changed for mobile devices. If you look up on top here, you're gonna see that other settings here don't have a mobile icon. So those can't be affected for mobile only. So if anything has a mobile icon next to it, that means you can change this and it won't affect the desktop version. So I'm gonna go ahead and just align this center. And you're gonna see what we do now over here is align center. I'm gonna do the same for this next paragraph here. I'm going ahead and click on the paragraph and activate it. Again, you're gonna see here on the left-hand side, the alignment has a mobile icon, so I can actually change this to center align, just like that. So this section here, you can see um, the blue box, this intersection here. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that to engage the section. This section consists of this information here, this paragraph, this button, and this image. You can kind of see it's all outlined in blue. Okay, so I've gone ahead and clicked these six dots. And now the section settings are over here on the left-hand side. You can see I can adjust the width I want to. That's pretty much the only mobile thing I can change here. But here I wanna show you something neat. Go over here to the advanced tab, go ahead and click on that. Once you click there, I want you to go down to re the responsive setting down here. Go ahead and click on that. And then you're gonna see here in the top of the responsive section, there's the option to reverse the columns. But right now I'm gonna reverse the columns for mobile devices. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this. And I want you to watch over here what happens. Go ahead and turn this on. And you can see now the image is on top of the content. Now this can be important. The reason this is important is that often on a website, you're gonna have your services and a photo. And then below it, you're gonna have a photo and then services. And then below that, you're gonna have services and a photo. So your content, photo, photo, content, content, photo, are gonna be like a checkerboard. When you put that mobily, it's gonna stack on top of each other and it's gonna go content, photo, photo, content, content, photo, photo, content. It's not gonna be consistent. And so for mobile devices, you can switch the photo to be on top of the columns so that it goes content, um, I'm sorry, photo, content, photo, content, photo, content. Okay, let's scroll on down to the next section. These bullet points look good, so I'm not gonna worry about changing those. This section here, the R number speaks. For the sake of this demo, I'm actually gonna turn this off. 
so that these numbers, you know, they don't show on the site. One thing to note about making something mobile friendly is not to overwhelm your people with too much information. Sometimes you're going to turn off content just to prevent people from having to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll when you have a large page. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So this area here, you can see here is this section and we're familiar with these. I'm going to go ahead and click on these six dots here to engage the section over here on the left hand side. Now again, you can see there's certain things here that I can adjust mobily. I'm not going to worry about any of these. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the advanced tab, click on that. And down here, there's a section called responsive. Go ahead and click on that. Once you click on that, you're going to see there's a way to change the visibility of each element, each section, based on whether it's on a desktop, a tablet, or a mobile. So I can simply just hide this on mobile devices by clicking this box here. And you'll see it gets grayed out over here on the right hand side. Now, if I scroll down a little further, you can see that this section here is still showing. But all of these counters are now grayed out and they're not going to show on a mobile device. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Now let's keep scrolling down to this section here, the Our Partners section. What I want you to do is I want you to click on the logo element right here. Go ahead and click there. You can see that this carousel settings has some options for mobile devices. So if you wanted this carousel to only show one slide at a time, currently it's showing two, you can simply change this. And this is actually a pretty smart thing to do on a mobile device. You don't want to cram in a whole bunch of logos into a narrow area. So we're just going to change this from two to one. So now on mobile devices, it'll slide only one logo at a time. All right, so that's a quick overview of how to make your website mobile friendly. It's actually pretty straightforward, and I totally recommend that you go into every page now that you've completed and turn on the mobile view and just see how it looks and adjust your headings, your font sizes, your alignment, your image placement, how many logos show at one time. Go ahead on each page and make them mobile friendly. All right, folks, just a little more left. Let's move on. All right, so for the most part, your website is now done. Now, there is one more thing you need to learn how to do, and that is to maintain your website. Your software on your website needs to be updated on a regular basis. And what I mean by software is your plugins, your theme, and the WordPress installation. These get constantly updated, and so you're going to have to learn how to maintain this yourself. And that's what we're going to do right now. When you're logged in on the left-hand side, you're going to see a link here called Updates. There's a number here, big red circle, it says 7. So there are 7 updates available. If you look further down, you can see Plugins has a red 6. There's 6 updates here. If you go under Appearance Themes, you're going to see there's, you're going to see there's one update there. 6 plus 1 is 7. In other words, there's a couple ways to do this. First, I'm going to show you the way to update clicking the updates link. So go on up to the update tab here and go ahead and click on it. Now, of course, if you don't have any updates available, this is going to be a blank page. Once you're on the page, scroll on down and you'll see here there's a plugin section here and it's telling me that these six plugins need to be updated. If I scroll a little further down, it's telling me that this theme down here also needs to be updated. To update these, you can simply just select all and then click update plugins. At which point, be aware that your site is now going to be down for, you know, maybe a minute or two as these updates happen. Once those updates are done, you would then simply scroll down here and do the same here. Select all and update themes. I'm not going to update these right now because I want to show you how it looks like when you're in the plugin and the theme section. So I haven't done these updates. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to plugins and just going to click on plugins. Now in the plugin page, it's very obvious which plugins need updating. Let me just scroll up a little bit. Basically, anything here with a yellow box is out of date and needs updating. So if you do it this way, you have a couple options. You can update them individually by simply clicking update, which is here. Or you can just simply select the ones that need updating like I'm doing now. And once you've done that, you can go to the bulk actions tab, select update. And this time I'm actually am going to apply this and click apply. 
As this happens, you'll notice that the plugins will update basically right in front of you. Great, so now my plugins are updated. Let's go ahead and update that theme. To do that, I simply go to Appearance, Themes. You can see here the theme that needs updating is actually my backup theme. Right here, it's telling me new version available. I just simply click Update Now. Now that theme is updated. Now, I certainly recommend that you do this on a weekly basis because an outdated plugin or an outdated theme can break your site. So if you want a clean, healthy site that's fully functioning, keep these things updated. There is a way to automate this. Simply click on Theme Details. And you'll see here there's a place that says Enable Auto Updates. Go ahead and select that. And that will automatically keep your themes updated when new releases come out. To do this with your plugins, simply go to Plugins. Over here on the right-hand side where you see Automatic Updates, simply click Enable Auto Updates for each plugin that you want to keep updated automatically. Now keep in mind, this isn't foolproof. You still are going to have to go in here and check to see if updates are necessary because, like I said, it's just not 100%. Sometimes you'll see a plugin needs updating, it doesn't auto-update, and you're just going to have to go in here and do it manually. In any case, that's how you keep the themes, plugins, and themes updated, and I certainly recommend doing it on a weekly basis. All right, your website is 99.99% done. There is just one little last thing we want to do. We want to do a little bit of cleanup in the back end, and we want to turn on that caching plugin that we installed way back at the beginning of this video. So let's hop into the back end of the site. All right. This isn't going to take too long at all. So we're going to go into our plugins area and we're going to delete um, some of the plugins that we're not using and we're going to set up our caching. So we're going to head in over here to plugins on the left hand side. Go ahead and click on that. And in here there's one plugin that we no longer need and it's this plugin here, the starter templates. That's how we first installed our template in the very very beginning. So we're just going to delete this because if we're not using it, we don't need it, let's delete it. So to do that, you simply click on Deactivate. And once it's Deactivate, you simply click on Delete. And let them know, yes, indeed, we do want to delete that. Now we want to turn on our caching. We have not turned this plugin on yet because when you're creating a website, you don't want to have your pages cached because it can get confusing. Sometimes you make an update, it doesn't look like you made the update because it's cached. So now that the site is done, we're going to turn on the caching. To do that, just go over here on the left hand side to WP Fastest Cache, click on that. And here in the settings area, what we're going to do is we're going to turn on every single one of these options here. So let me walk you through that. First of all, we're going to enable it. And then we are going to preload anything from the cache that we can. And in this case, we're going to preload everything, all of our posts, all our categories, all of our attachments. I don't think we're using tags, but we'll click that and there. And we are going to restart after complete. Go ahead and click on that and say OK. Next, login users, go ahead and do this. We, as login users, don't want to see a cached version. We want to see the updated version. And then click on mobile, keep going down, click on new post. And here, agree, clear all cache, say OK. Updated post, click on that. Change this as well to clear all cache. Minify HTML and just keep on going down until all of these are checked. Once you're done doing that, go ahead and click Submit. Now your options are saved. Now it's good practice. Anytime you make any updates to your website's content, simply delete the cache. To do that, you just want to go up here to where it says Delete Cache. Go down here to where it says Delete Cache and Minified CSS. Go ahead and just click on that. And that will delete the cache so that your new, new content will be displayed on the website. Folks, that's it. We did it. You guys just made a full website for your nonprofit that has a donation page, a latest news, a calendar, loads quick, looks good, and you know how to use it so you can update it yourself. Congratulations, folks. That's it. This video is done. Your website's made. If, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section below. Be sure to like this video, share this video, and subscribe. Till next time, folks. I hope you have a great day.